Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Amigos New Year's Eve bash. Oh, yeah. Uh, We've got... A uh, huge show ahead of us today. Um, we've got our predictions for next year. We've got last year's predictions. We've got tons of fine, fine Irish whiskey, which we're going to taste. Um, we have your picks from your favorite games this past year. And we have a year in review Amiga news. So why don't we go ahead and start off with our Amiga news year in review. What were the biggest stories, Aaron? of 2018. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just kidding, both. <laughs> well, you know, I'd say the big story, what's the biggest story in my mind? I think the biggest story of the whole year uh, was the announcement of a uh, a new Amiga coming being made and, uh, uh, and, and actually taking life this year. We saw it, they fired it up, they played games on it. Uh, the fellows that were behind the vampire uh, put it together, FPGA, uh, take that as it will. Some people, we don't, we're not going to go to that. That's another news item. Uh, the continued infighting of the community mm-hmm. over this stuff. I was just reading some stuff about the other day. Uh, it never ends. Anytime anybody starts a thread on it, they go nuts. Uh, we can also uh, touch briefly on the uh, legal battles that have happened this Boy, year. What exciting news stories we've had. Well, I mean, listen, In you fighting said, and legal said, battle. Hey, you said the news of the you, year. You don't write the news. news. You're just reporting That's it. Right, I man. understand. Uh, that we've had uh, Coanto and, and all these other places going to war over the... We, we They had a kickstart out for a while. Now they don't. We had a uh, some guys working on an Amiga front end for a possible meeting. Now we don't. That's been taken off the table. So that stuff never ends. And they're still going to war over this tiny little chunk of land where they could squeeze all the profits mm-hmm. out of that sucker, you know, that had been previously squeezed. Uh, so those are news. Now, let's look at some good news. Uh, there were some excellent independent uh, game releases this year. Uh, nice uh, uh, puzzle game uh, that we tried out. Uh, we also had some great uh, ports come over from the Odyssey 2, mm-hmm. which I was very pleased mm-hmm. with. That was some great news. Uh, Barbarian 2 was a very, uh, or Barbarian Plus, excuse me, was a very excellent game that got that got tweaked and shown off, and I really enjoyed playing that one. I thought that was a lot of fun. So it looks like uh, uh, gaming is, in terms of programming for the system, is sort of on the upswing. Yeah, yeah. Now, did we have the year of, of the C64? Did we have the year of the ZX Spectre? Did we have the year uh, of the answer? No, we didn't have any of those years. Those guys are getting... They're getting stuff hand over fist. We're just sort of getting a trickle, but you know, a trickle is better than a drought. A though. trickle is better than a drought, and some of the stuff, like I said, has been was quite good. Uh, what was that game we reviewed on the show? Gosh, it was an excellent game. It was an independent game. Worthy. Worthy. Mm-hmm. Tremendous game. Yeah. We really enjoyed that one, yeah. didn't we, Boat? And that was a slick commercial release. Sure, it know? was. You know, so uh, uh, there were some good high notes uh, for the year. Uh, of course, there have been a lot of hardware. Uh, um, advances made. Of course, there was that really awesome gimmick for the CD32 that that you could plug into the back, and it gave you the joystick ports and the SD card. It was and it was pretty reasonably priced. Uh, the, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the Vampire series has kind of trudged on. There's word on the street that a, a new set of accelerators is going to be coming out for the classic Amigas uh, in the 040 and 060 area. So that's sort of exciting news. Uh, so. It's, I wouldn't say it's been a news-filled year, but it's been uh, interesting. I, uh, can you think of anything I'm leaving out Well, here? Steve Brown in the chat says the Amiga X project got canceled. That's Well, that Amiga X project, is, uh, from what I heard, that is what I was talking about in terms of the... Uh, they were, they were, that was a program that we'd seen a very slick front end mm-hmm. for. Now, I have heard uh, uh, that that project will continue under a new name. Ooh. Uh, but that, that could be hearsay. Uh, it's too bad. I don't know if you ever looked at any of the footage those guys had released, but it was very slick. And the, this was... Uh, this was this was recently, too. Uh, yeah. I, I think we just covered this uh, a couple a couple weeks ago, and uh, Steve says that they are they're pushing right now, I guess, to release it in an emulator. So it right. won't be a full-on Amiga Mini, but possibly it, 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 something. It, 
available in the dark recesses and, of the internet. And we'll get on to our, uh, I mean, this, this was the year of the mini, right? Mm -hmm. And when you look back, you had all these minis, and uh, um, certainly right at the top of the heap was your C64 mini, which had uh, an excellent year. But uh, we'll get into our predictions on um, Amiga on that front, but they won't. Whatever it is, it will not be that that Amiga X project. Yeah, yet. not under that name. Which now again, goes back to the legal wranglings and whatnot. Um, speaking of Irish whiskey, we have before us two gifts that we've been waiting to open uh, on the show. These were gifts from Graham Vebke. Uh, so, Aaron, uh, we have two choices. Which one would you like to try first? Well, call me old-fashioned, but I like occasionally when I get a hankering, I do enjoy a little black bush. Oh. Well, Aaron, I will pour you a dram. A dram. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, you know... To summarize our news look back here, mm -hmm. uh, I was just reading an article, and I believe it was on the Amiga Facebook page, I can't remember, about a fellow who had released a game, and it was sort of getting hammered for it. I guess it, they didn't, people didn't like it or whatnot. And there was, of course, there was a lot of infighting over it. And what I would like to say, is, as, a, as a nice New Year's resolution for the, for the community, can we please try to get along? <laughs> and I say that from the ground... The trolls all the way up to the corporate folks. You're killing, and this isn't the ghost. The, the this isn't the goose that laid the golden egg. This is more like the uh, the chick that might lay a bronze jelly bean here. We we don't want to further fragment and jack up the society here. Let's let's all relax and try to remember what we're doing here. Sounds good Everybody to me. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll drink to that. Salut. Cheers. Wow! Wow! That is a fine, fine spear. Black Bush, it says Irish whiskey, rich and smooth. Oh yes, quite smooth. It's got, it's got a good body. And uh, it's, I guess it's been, uh, it's been distilled since 1608. So quite a, quite a pedigree. The old Bushmills Distillery. Pretty good, eh? Absolutely, that's a very smooth, good. That's a smooth and Irish whiskey I think I've ever had. Very good, very good. Beautiful. Uh, you, of course, choose to shoot yours like cheap vodka, where I will sip mine. Listen, I like to, uh, I like to take it all in. <laughs> I do all the uh, uh, taste testing down in the gullet. I zone, see. It's a different, know. a different. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Also, I'm a man. <clears throat> <laughs> last week, last year, last eon, last year, Aaron, we um, we had some predictions, and we said that. Uh, in the coming year, we would see how many of those predictions came true. All right. You unfortunately chose not to write down your predictions. I didn't have too many, but I can remember. I can remember a couple. Okay. Of them. So go ahead. So I'm just going to kind of go through. These were uh, people submitted these. Um, Will Williams wrote in, I know him. and uh, he said that uh, there was going to be. He predicted fighting over Amiga trademark between Cloanto and other parties. Bing. <laughs> very good. Very. That's good. like predicting the sun to rise. Unfortunately. Right. Um, you get a cookie, Will. Let's see. Uh, Jason Warns uh, predicted that the Vampire standalone system gets released and immediately sued by the Mist Project. There's a battle of FPGA projects. Did we see the Vampire standalone system we released did. this year? No, not released, but it mm. was up up and at them. Oh, okay. Now the Mist Project still out. It's still uh, presumably going okay. I don't see a. Uh, I don't see a legal battle occurring there because they really had, neither one of them have a basis for you know <laughs> right right we're working something else but you know hey uh, i i would like to say uh that the uh, the amiga mini was released but it was unleashed we got unleashed, that so we right. actually get to see the thing at something um darren coles predicted uh that we that we will get an extra host and become the three amigos and i guess that sort of came true it with did? the launch of arg presents and uh the, our uh, our fellow host brent of that show well i don't consider brent a fellow host he's i consider him like you know uh, uh like a lackey you know, like uh, you should watch Iron Man. There's you got Jarvis in there. That's sort of that's the way I look at Brent. <laughs> the Jarvis of the uh, Amigos podcasting group. He's my crony. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, and we'll give him half credit on that one. He also said that um, the podcast gets so many Patreon subscribers, the whole podcast mainly becomes about singing the list of Patreon subscribers. Ironically, <laughs> what? 
If that were to happen, then this would be a solo segment <laughs> because I can't mm. handle that. Not a whole show of it. My God. Uh, a couple more. Chris Folds announced. Uh, he said that um, one of the three main VR makers will pull out of the market. Oculus, HTC, or PSVR will pull out of the market. Um, that has not happened. That's a miss. However, Oculus has signaled that they are pulling back on their PC-based uh, high-end VR uh, solutions. You know what I find interesting is, and I, of course you know me, I listen to a lot of shows. I keep my hand on the pulse of, of gaming, even modern gaming, to a certain degree. And the PR, or the, P, the, the PlayStation VR actually seems to be uh, picking up steam. Absolutely. It looks uh, like it's the only one that seems like it's growing. It, well, it's certainly the one that gets the most chat. Right. Now, uh, my brother forsook VR. Basically, I don't see here. I don't hear him ever talk about it anymore. Boat. Mm -hmm. Do you? Well, he was he was hot and heavy at the beginning. He's sort of right. like me in that respect. And so, boat. One of the predictions should have been you will buy and sell VR at least six times <laughs> during the year. You know that laptop the I got last under. week? Yeah. I already returned it. Why? Well, everything you said was true. I don't deserve to have something that nice. So. I just sent it right back. What was the real reason? No, I mean, it was all of the things you were talking about. You how it was too expensive. You deserve to have a nice laptop? Yeah, how, I didn't say that. How it, was, it was too expensive. I said, I deserve to have a nice laptop. So, you uh, deserve a lesser one. Yeah, I'll be getting I'll be getting another one for your approval. Also, the incredible incredible expense. It was. It was way too expensive. Um, Aid, a.k.a. Stress Local. <laughs> right here. <laughs> um, he says that the... A1222 releases. Now, I don't remember what that was. Do you remember what the A1222 release, or that that is? It seems like maybe some kind of hardware. Well, I said it's a good guess. I, I, the numbers, I don't I, I don't know enough about it. No. Okay, so if you're in the chat and you know what, what uh, Aid was talking about, you can let us know if his prediction came true or not. Um, and finally, my predictions from last year. Yes. Aaron will stop using text-to-speech after the brain trust collectively throttle him for posting one too many completely unintelligible message on no, Discord. No, no. <laughs> I use text-to-talk, I use voice-to-talk today. This very day, so that is a miss. Oh, and Aaron, do you remember any of your predictions from last year? I predicted year? an Amiga Mini would be at least started. <laughs> and I guess, I mean, no, I'm not gonna count that, that's a fail. Okay. That's a fail. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fail. I believe I said something about a new ki uh, a new kickstart, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna give myself half credit on that one because they did have one briefly, and then it, it went away. So I uh, uh, it wasn't that a good year for predictions. Uh, it's uh, listen. We're predicting things about a computer that came out in 85. Well, remember, this is your predictions from last year, not your predictions from this year. Okay. I'm talking about last okay. year. Okay. Remember, we had a long conversation on the Amiga Mini last year. So yeah, but I was wrong. Well, again, you'll have a chance to redeem yourself here in the new year of 2019. I hope I'm wrong. Ah, uh, and Duncan says the A1222 is a power PC-based Amiga One. Okay, and and Duncan, was that actually was that released and was it cheap? I'm guessing the second question is no. no. <laughs> Nothing right. with Amiga One involved comes to cheap. All right, Aaron. So now we've gotten all the old predictions out of the way. We've poured ourselves some drinks. Well, you've already had your drink. I need drink. more drinks. Okay, let me let me give you just a, just, a, just a little bit more. <laughs> this is the next segment where uh, the you black pour me bush. another one. I'll, I'll I'll milk this one girlishly. Okay, in the best boat style. Um, before we get started with the show, well, it's time to start the show proper, I guess. What do you mean? Um, what was that? Well, that was just getting the, the housekeeping out of the way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Housekeeping. So we are going to um, we're going to do a lot of things on this show. Okay, the bulk of the show is that we're going to be running down our favorite games from the past year. We're going to badmouth them. Interspersed in between that, we are going to have uh, a little trivia contest between you and I, and possibly some people in the chat, or possibly people in the Discord. Okay. Okay. So. What we're going to do is I received this, and uh, funnily enough, you also received this. It is funnily this enough. This is uh, Geek Gamer Trivia. Okay, so this is 100 trivia questions. Um, you said you you looked at the top two. So well, we'll, 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 we'll... You're assuming I read the, what the answer was or could remember. <laughs> okay. So I'll we... predict the first one, FM Towns Marty. What we're going to do is we're going to split these in half. All right. You're going to take a stack, and I'm going to take a stack. 
and in between every couple categories, we are going to ask each other two questions a piece. All right. And if you get the right answer, you make a pile of your cards and I'll make a pile of my cards. And at the end, we will decide who is the real video game trivia master. All right. So there's no wager here. This is just for bragging just rights. Just for bragging rights. And we are also going to give some questions to the chat, the YouTube chat, and also the Discord. So this, if you are on Discord, um, if you are one of our Patreon supporters, you can send me a DM on Discord, and I will call you, and uh, and you can uh, answer a question live on the air. That's looks, just my. That's looks my, like you put up your Mario Brothers. That's my new Mario Brothers high school. How, how did you do? I can't see them. I got over a hundred thousand for ah. the first time. I will humble you. Okay. Uh, so. Let's get this show on the road. First of all, I want to thank the man, the dunk, Duncan Styles. Right. He created all of the neon intros for each category that we're going to play. So thank you to Duncan. Um, this is for you, Dunk. And the videos that we are going to be playing while we talk about these games, I've created a, um, a playlist. If you want to go back and watch these later on, it's just called 2018 Best Of on the Amigos Retro Gaming channel. So you can go back and revisit all of our favorite and not so favorite games of this past year. Mm. So we're going to kick things off with the Best Adventure Game category. Boom. My head. Well, well. <laughs> boom. My Away wall. from your head. There we go. Ah. <laughs> okay. Uh. So, best adventure game category. The listener choice of this was Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Now, Aaron, what did you think about Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis? It looked good. Was, it looked fun, was this it. was this a game that you played back in the day? No, no, certainly not. I know that you you weren't a huge point and click adventure game. Not fella. really, no, mm -hmm. no. I, mean, I was aware of it uh, when we did it for the show. It was uh, I, I enjoyed it. Again, I uh, um, I like the opening. I think more than anything else, mm -hmm. the very opening of this is top shelf. Yeah, it was very it, amusing. It runs like a like a movie credit sequence. It's but great. the uh, uh, it was, you know, it's your standard Monkey island -y type game. Not a bad thing. Uh, and, and the Edge Edge, I mean, I thought they got it down pretty well. Mm -hmm. so I, I enjoyed it. I mean, as much as I can enjoy a game like that, I thought it was pretty fun. Cool, cool. All right, Aaron, what was your adventure game, best adventure game of 2018? Now, you're going to think I'm crazy. Crazy. But, uh, and I had, there were actually several of these. I, this was a tough category for me, but I picked, of all things, Degeneration. Mm. I really thought this had a, a I mean, and calling this an adventure game, it is, I guess, sort of. It's an action adventure game, puzzler, you know, say what you will. But I like the, uh, I like the tone it set. I like the idea uh, of the world, and I like the the premise of it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one, and this is what I actually have gone back and played since we did the show. You, you know what I really like about this game is the color scheme. Yeah, it really reminded me of those classic ZX Spectrum titles with the really bright neon colors. And normally these isometric type gimmicks are not my bag, but I don't know, this one I, I really enjoyed. I, I thought it was a lot of fun, and on top of everything else, uh, it, it surprised me, I'll have to say. Now, it, this isn't your standard adventure game like an in Indiana Jones, uh, but, uh, and which also that's probably another reason I picked it, because mm -hmm. there's more, obviously, you're, you're it's doing It has more action you know. elements, for sure. But I dug it, I really did. So I had to say, after I looked over the list. Now, I'll, I'll, just as an honorable mention, I will say that, I mean, I, really, a lot of these games on this list, there were so many games we did this year that I enjoyed. Okay. You know, well, just, before you give your honorable mentions, okay, how about ahead. I give my pick? Okay, go ahead. So, my pick for best adventure game was, drum roll please, you don't have to actually give a drum roll. Flight of the Amazon Queen. <laughs> yes. So I know that you were shocked that I enjoyed this as much as I did. But I truly believe that this is one of not only the best adventure games available on the Amiga, but one of the greatest games for the Amiga as a platform. Um, it takes the point and click genre to its logical end. I mean, as far as having graphics, pixelized graphics, you can't get them. They're not drawn any more beautiful than this. The music was fantastic. The dialogue was genuinely funny. I thought the plot was really cool. You know, it's that golden age of Hollywood type plot. Um, there were so many neat touches in this game that uh, you just, you know, 
you you saw them in the Scum games, the Lucas Hearts games, but they were just everything was done better in Amazon Queen. Did you like this one? You know, I loved it. This became and this was uh, when I was getting ready to go into my honorable mentions. This right here was at the top of the list. I'd say D Generation beat this out strictly on the basis of the jaunt of that of that, that sort of actiony adventure game is a little more my bag. This game, though, I love the interface. It's my favorite interface. Mm-hmm. I also loved the uh, the where you would there was a part of this game to go to, to different parts of the island that you would be on this like tall like plateau or something like that and you could look over and you could I loved that because it, it was easy to get around. Yeah, the dialogue like you said was funny. The it, graphics this was tippity top. Mm-hmm. You know I've got nothing I got nothing against this one. Um, okay, what were your honorable mentions? Yeah, and, and you're gonna be like God everything. I found something I like in a lot of these. I really like the in-depth murder mystery uh, fun of Cruise for a Corpse. It's just that game. The what brought it down a lot was just the the structuring of the game and the, the monotony of going back and forth and the way it was. But I mean, I liked the concept of it. I thought it was a really fun game. Um, I also really uh, got into Dreamweb, and I bought, which I thought was a, a that game had a lot of potential. Uh, to be honest with you, and I liked Black Crypt as well. Uh, I think. Uh, those I think Black Crypt would be a lot of fun uh, to play a lot over and over. You can play that one, where some of these other ones you kind of go through them once and you're pretty much done. Right. So I, I thought all three of those were great. Really, there were some other ones in there that I liked as well. I mean, there, there was really not that many duds this year. I'm looking over the list here. I mean, Waxworks wasn't the best. I would say that was probably one of my. It depends. Least yeah, it depends on if you like that horror soft type game, which is just it's not for me. Yeah, it could. Uh, Waxworks could have been great. Mm-hmm. It was okay. It could have been great. You have any honorable mentions you want to throw out? You have talked about them all. All right, I literally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this was, you, I would never have guessed that we would a done this many adventure games in a year, and b that I'd like so many. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is odd. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about our best arcade port of the year. So you know, it's funny, Aaron. We didn't do that many arcade ports. Yeah, I uh, noticed there that. were. I think there were only three. So uh, they, they um, I can't believe that, but that's amazing. It me. is. It's crazy. So uh, best arcade ports as selected by the listeners. This really comes. Actually, you know what, Aaron? Why don't you read the three arcade ports that we did this year? All since right. there are so few. So this year we had the choice of Shadow Warriors, uh, Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters, and the New Zealand Story. Right. And the winner as selected by the listeners this year is the New Zealand Story. Yeah. So this one is, to me, this was a no-brainer. I think I thought far and away this was the, the best arcade port. It was the most accurate to the, the arcade release. It was the most fun to play. Of course, that's, that's objective. But uh, I really enjoyed the New Zealand story. I thought the music was great. Um, and I, I like cutesy platformers, so I'm a sucker for this, this sort of game. So you, were, you went along with the listeners on this one. Absolutely. Me and the listeners, we were as one. Now, Aaron, I have a feeling you went in a different direction. I broke away from everyone. <laughs> Here, uh, and pick Shadow Warriors as, as a game that I enjoy. Now, nothing against uh, New Zealand Story. It's, uh, it's not. It's okay. I mean, it was okay. I didn't hate it, but it, I liked. I liked this game in the arcade when it was out. I thought it was an awesome game, and uh, uh, it, and the Amiga port here or or reimagining. I thought they did a good job. I mm-hmm. thought it was a lot of fun. I remember playing this one. This is what I used to play as a, as a youngin, and uh, uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's a uh, Ninjas, man. Ninjas are cool. There's, you know what they say, there ain't no party like a ninja party. That's right, because a ninja party goes all night. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was the one I chose. Again, is this my favorite arcade port on the Amiga? No. But I thought it was fun. And of the three games we had to choose from, this was the one I enjoyed the most. Now, I think that, you know, what, what I thought, something funny occurred to me on last week's ARG Presents. Yeah. You described the opening of the Ninja Gaiden arcade game yeah. When you really were describing Shadow Warriors. Well, and it was Shadow Warriors is a different name. Over, over the, the Shadow Warriors is a is a separate name for Ninja Gaiden. So the Ninja Gaiden arcade machine is really just Shadow Warriors. Yeah. Okay, I didn't re- realize that until we were just watching this now, and I was listening to you describe the guy in the hockey mask and the, the run way, up and, and all that stuff. If you ever played that in the arcade, it's that that's hey they got it. This is the exact same sort of gimmick. It's like. The arcade one looks a little bit better, but yeah, it's the same thing. The two guys run on each other. Yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. You learned something today. I did. Yeah. I did. So uh, that is the um, that is the best arcade port. 
So now next year we gotta tackle more arcade ports, boat. We should. Yeah. Amigos Game Selection Committee. Hey, listen up, Amiga. That's that's one thing it does great. Right. Generally. generally. Um. Ah. All right. So we are going to do our first trivia section here. All right. So, Aaron. Yes, sir. I'm going to start things off, and uh, I'm going to ask you two questions. Okay. All right. Get ready for I'm, the first one. I'm ready. Okay. When Mega Man defeats a boss, he A acquires their power, B upgrades his arm cannon, C learns a new attack, D can access the next level. Well, I mean, it's A and C. Isn't it? It is. It is A and C. Uh, the, 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 the question says the answer is A, but it is actually A and C. Yeah. So congratulations. There is one for your pile of glory. Thank you. Okay. Why don't you ask me a question? All right. Here we go. Okay. Oh, this is a music question. Ooh. Bud. Which music rhythm game series that has the player yielding a guitar-shaped controller came first, Rock Band or Guitar Hero? I'm gonna go with Guitar Hero. Correct. Oh. That's correct, that's an easy one, eh? Yeah. Okay, Aaron, your final question for this round. All right. Is, in the game series Portal, the sadistic passive-aggressive GLaDOS is a sentient AI bent on killing her test subject, Chell, during the events of, I'm not sure what that means, during the events of Portal 2, what is the vegetable that GLaDOS is supplanted into after Wheatley takes control of Aperture Science Laboratories? So we're looking for the kind of vegetable that GLaDOS is, is supplanted into. No. Oh, um, well, I have seen people play Portal 2. I'll, 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 admittedly, I don't remember the vegetable in question, so I'm going to take a, a wild stab at it, which I'm going to say eggplant. Incorrect. The answer is a potato. Oh. All right. Unfair. No card for How is that you. A retro? I guess this isn't retro. Is it, it is not. I want to rip off. This one here was actually face up. Oh. Okay. Primal Rage oh. for the Super Nintendo falls into which gaming genre? I'd call that a fighting game. Oh, what a what a <laughs> joke! I'm, did you know that Portal answer? No. All right. <laughs> okay, what and this one goes out to the chat. So if you are the first person in the chat to get this question right, then you can email me your physical mailing address at john at amigospodcast.com and I will send you a limited edition Gamble Train 2019 postcard. Ooh, I haven't even seen those. Yeah. So the question is... Gamble Train. In The Legend of Zelda... Ocarina of Time. What is the name of the fairy companion that accompanies Link, voicing the iconic catchphrase, Hey, listen! That's iconic. It is iconic. So, chat, if you know the answer, write in. First one wins. I believe it's Ookla the Mock. Ookla the Mock? Ookla the Mock. He was in the, uh, he was in the NWA, wasn't he? Uh, I will let you know when it is it. Oh, okay. All right. You could have just said no. No. I have to exert control <laughs> over don't. every aspect of this show. I'm not one of your students, Boat. <laughs> Come on, it's New Year's Eve. Lighten up. <laughs> All right. So it's time to move on to our next part of the show, which is Amiga Predictions. So this year... Amiga Predictions! Can you jingle there. Well, that you just announced the winner because Michael Ryan... Just wrote in with the correct answer of Navi. Wow. So, Michael. I misread that. <laughs> what did you think it was? Nazi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, not the correct answer. So, Michael, if you're interested in a limited edition Gamble Train um, postcard, send me your mailing address. Now I am donning the turban of glory. Last year your turban wilted. Well, this year it is fully erect. I see. All right. Well, wow. maybe. Okay, it looks sort of like a chef's cap in some ways when it sort of shifts to the side. Okay, so now we have the predictions. Unfortunately, I did not leave a space for people to put their names by their predictions, so these are sort of collated from the community at large. First prediction is... Collated? Collated. Okay. Have you heard that word before? I'm not. Do you spend a lot of time with a Xerox well, machine? Well, I was going to say I've heard collated. I've never heard collated. I've never heard it pronounced like I that. I don't know. I don't know where the emphasis should be. Clearly. 
Um, right here. First prediction is Amiga OS and Workbench 3.1 will be open sourced. <laughs> <laughs> in in, in parentheses, it says we can always hope. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the next prediction is the Amiga community will have a falling out. <laughs> I think, I think that's, a, that's a pretty good pretty good chance. Um, Cloanto and Hyperion are bought up by a new unknown multinational company. No. No. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> they got to squeeze. The next one is... Figgy CTZ's portable Amiga takes the Amiga world by storm. It does look good, doesn't it? It does look good. It's coming right along. We've I, got the inside track. I will that. be. Uh, I can't wait to check that thing out live and in person. I over feel like Amiga we know, I listen to all these other podcasts, and these guys are all like gaming professionals. They've got like feelers that they're all they're moving around. They're talking to all the geniuses, and then like here comes dumb guys. But we actually have. We have a few hands in the pie That's right. here. That's and right. This is one of them. It's one. I feel like a big man. Now. Absolutely. Not like a you know a small man. That's right. Yeah. And the final prediction for this segment is: all rights holders continue to hate each other to the level they all run out of money suing each other. <laughs> well, a man can dream. That's. <laughs> I'd say that's more likely. Yeah. <laughs> Where are they getting all this money? Is what I can't figure out. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Now it's time for some predictions for our show for okay. 2019. Okay. And you're predicting things about the Amigos. Things that will happen with the Amigos. Number right. one. This year, Boat went from hair to no hair. Next year, Boat grows a full Mr. T Mohawk. I think that's likely. Um, Eep will not allow that. I can tell you that right now. Second prediction. Brent starts a coup and brings both podcasts under his reign of terror. That would be horribly scary. What do you think the chances are of that? I'd say 40, 50%. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> About 50. And finally, Aaron starts his own Amigos Wrestling League with himself as commissioner yeah. and calls himself the Wacky Warrior. Yes. I like that one. <laughs> I think you're wearing your getup for the Wacky Warrior. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So we'll have more predictions later on in All the right. show. Now it's time for the next category. This category is Best Flight Game of 2018. So, Aaron, are you a fan of the flight games in general? Would you consider yourself? The simple ones, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The simpler, the better. My ideal flight game... It's just a game where there's a blank screen and a dot on it, and then you just have free reign with the joystick. Oh, yeah. That's all I need. That sounds pretty good. All right. So our first, um, the listener choice in this game, unsurprisingly, was one of your favorites and mine, Wing Commander. Yes, Wing Commander. Uh, as long as you don't play this on a stock five or 600, you're in business. <laughs> As I demonstrated earlier this year in a, in a <laughs> much-watched video of me trying desperately to get this to work in, in a playable way, you can't. Mm. This one, you have to have it as being a 1,200 bare minimum. Yeah. Otherwise, you're bugged. There's some acceleration. Now, Aaron, what are your what was your top flight game for this year? All right. Let me consult my chart here, but I'm pretty sure I know it. Guess what? Wing Commander. Oh. oh I'm a big fan. I like the Wing Commander. As long as you've got something you can run it on, what, you're in business. To you, what makes Wing Commander so unique? <clears throat> Listen, you know I love games that have a cool backstory. I like games that are fun. They're not too complicated. They're well thought out and presented. And this game checks all the boxes. It's got an awesome backstory. I like the in-between stuff. It's very cinemaware-like. No denying that. It's got good music-ish. It's got... Uh, uh, the, it's a game that is... Not too difficult when you're up there flying around in space. And it's just a fun game. Now, was Wing Commander 1 the best of the Wing Commander series? Not in my opinion, but it was awful good. And it kicked off the series in a big way. So for me, this was a pretty easy choice. Now, I went the other way with this one. Um, I knew that Wing Commander was going to be very popular. But that was not my favorite game, my favorite flight game of last year. My favorite was a little game I like to call... Z Wolf 2 Wild Justice. That's one of the best names of any it is, game. It yeah. is. Uh, this game showed me things that I didn't know were possible on the Amiga. For some reason, they're running it <laughs> more than three times the that's speed. The way, that's oh, the, okay. Maybe that's, that's just it. how it is. That's it. Uh, so, uh, Z Wolf 2 is that. Uh, that 
polygonal 3D free roaming mission based game uh, that really shows off the little used uh, three dimensional capabilities of the Amiga. Not a lot of 3D games on the Amiga. And I think that this one is pretty unique in terms of, uh, you know, what you're asked to do. Can you think of any other games that are quite like the Z-Wolf series? Well, quite like it. I mean, eh, not with the same look. You know, this game, this game came out of nowhere. Like, I'd never heard of this mm -hmm. game, man. And then, bam. And we had to play it. And I was like, man, this is actually pretty good once you get the controls halfway down. You're in business. I really dug this game. Now, I mean, it's not perfect. It's The hardware limits it to the nines. It's, you know, you only have the view uh, on it is low. I mean, you don't have a huge, you don't have the whole swath of the screen to look at. They've got it kind of enclosed in like a box. But I mean, it's a it was a good game if you consider what it's running on. Uh, I, I have a Atari Jaguar, and this was, this crushes the pack-in game. <laughs> You know, but so and the Jaguar has far greater capabilities. Now the Jag wasn't the uh, there was a tank game that was sort of like this, right? No, the game I'm thinking of was the the one that has the girl that talks to you. Where did you learn how to fly? Uh, that one, and where you fly around this planet. But I would play this a million times if I had to play that. Yeah, and the cool thing about this game is that it's not all blowing stuff up. It's not like the um, yeah, those rescue missions, and right? Stuff. It's not like the Urban Strike and Jungle Strike. This one you've got a winch and you can lift things up and you can pilot other types yeah, of crafts. That is crazy. And, yeah. Yeah, that is a real, and you, and like the remote aspect mm -hmm. of it, it was fun. I, I really did like this one. I mean, this was this was definitely near the top. I like Queen Commander because I'm old school. I really love Queen Commander, but this game was one of my biggest surprises of the year for sure. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bad mouth your choice. Cool, cool. I'm glad. All right, we're moving on to the next category, which we're going to talk about the best platformer slash action game um, category. Now, the Amiga uh, is sort of hit and miss when it comes to the platformer and action games. Of course, that is also a wide swath. I also appreciate the fact that Duncan put a piranha plant is the uh, <laughs> for the Amiga Awards game. Um, you know, they some they do some things really well. I think there's there's a ton of action games, obviously, that are great. The platformer thing, eh, you know, well, not quite so. One thing about the Amiga when it comes to platformers, what else? What they may lack in quality, they make up for in quantity. That's quantity, true. Quantity, there's like four billion of these things. Absolutely. So you find the one you like. So the listeners selected, undoubtedly, one of the best platformers on the Amiga. This is one that I can't believe does not get more love or didn't get ported to anything else. This is Rough and Tumble. Yeah. I mean, this is basically like Metal Slug. I think it's even better than Metal Slug. Uh, it's it's a great, great run and gun platformer. I mean, it doesn't star cool guy action hero Jones. It stars some kind of dopey kid. But you know that the they had to they had to keep the Amiga tradition of mascot suckery. That's uh, true. That's this guy's true. not as bad. Um, did you like Rough and Tumble? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it's not these aren't necessarily my bag that type of game, but I thought it was a pretty good game. You know, it, it's 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 very good looking. You know, it plays well. I didn't have any problem with it. I mean, I'm like you. I'm like, where did this game come from? How come I didn't hear it? It's a fun game. Yeah. Um, now, my pick is definitely going to be more controversial. Oh, oh dear. Uh, this was a game that I thought was very unique, but not a lot of people felt the same way about it. Uh, I chose a title called Soccer Kid. Now, Aaron, what do you remember about Soccer Kid? I was inf infuriated, frustrated to no end. Um, I remember going to chase the ball. Down. I mean, it's, I, I didn't like. I mean, I don't hate Soccer Kid. I know it's actually pretty popular. Uh, it's an interesting, kind of, sort of clever, but it wasn't necessarily my amongst my favorites. That's for sure. The thing I liked about Soccer Kid is it wasn't all. It wasn't a, like in most games, you know the controls and you understand the controls within a couple seconds of playing the game. You got your jump, you got your projectile, you got your gun, you got your whatever. With Soccer Kid, it actually emulates you know, using a soccer ball to do various things. You can jump on it, you can kick it in multiple directions, you can roll it around. Uh, it adds a level of depth to, a, a, you know, the otherwise sort of standard platforming genre that you don't normally see. Um, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world to control, but I have a feeling that if you spent some time with it, you could get really good, and then you could kind of use it to show off to your friends. You could say, check this out, look what I can do. So. You, know what, you know what this game, I mean, I mean, the Soccer Kid in a certain way, have you ever played a game called... Uh, DuckTales. 
Yes. Remember how the, uh, uh, Scrooge could hop? He could have his mm-hmm. cane, he could whack a guy, he yeah. could hop on like a pony. Very similar. Yeah, that's and right. I love that game, so maybe that's why I like this one so much. Yeah, so Soccer Kid was my choice for Platformer of the Year. Mm. How about you, Aaron? You know, I went way back uh, because we actually played this on the uh, Amiga Thon, uh, and, and then I believe we did it before. I'm sure we did it before we covered it. And then we covered it, and it was, and I really loved it, and that's Yo Joe. Mm-hmm. Now, again, in the Amiga tradition of loafy, doofusy style mascots, you've got a couple greasers that you run, lumble around. But what I liked about it is the is is the, the multiplayer aspects of it. This game came out of nowhere. I don't ever hear too many people talk about this, but I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, you I know, mean, it's a cool exploration. Mm-hmm. The enemies were different. There were there were different weapons. The music was good. It yeah. was an all round. Yeah, yeah, it was I, definitely it was an under colorful. the radar. I think I liked it, man, a lot. So I, this one I had to give the nod, just for any reason because it's unique too. It's just it's an odd bird yeah, amongst in a sea of of these sorts of games. And right. Again, for me, the simultaneous multiplayer always fun. Yeah, and there aren't. I mean, can you think of another Amiga game where you have two two people playing at the same time in a platforming game like this? I can't. In a game like this, yeah. I, one doesn't spring into mind. I'm sure there are many. One doesn't spring to mind. But I, I thought I'm this, sure there are not many. I'm sure there are very few because you, you they got a better memory they, than they, I there's, do. There's, there's, there. First of all, there's not a whole lot of of you know platformers on the Amiga that are in this style. You got your Zools, you got your Super Frogs, and you got something like Yo Joe, which is totally unique. So. And, and you've got your again the plot of this is wacky. These guys, I believe, they're running from the law. And they hid in this mansion. They look like Elvis for some reason. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're greasers, right? Mm-hmm. And then, and it was just, uh, I enjoyed it. And this is another one I went back to play some after the episode. And I've, I, I, I will go back to this one for a quick, fun time. Yeah, yeah. All right, Aaron. <laughs> that concludes <laughs> that category. So we are going to do another round of trivia. All right. So I'll start things off here. Aaron. Yes, sir. This is perfect for you. All right. Given your knowledge of the platform. The original Xbox was released in what year? Oh, oh man. Oh, I have to guess the year without any... Without a right? Given the fact that you talk about the Xbox more than any other person that's ever lived, I expect you to know to this. To be fair, I didn't have one when it released. Um, Don't look at the chat. I'm not... Chat, if you could refrain from answering so Aaron is not tempted. God, boy, I'm so bad at these. Let's go with, uh, let's say 97. 2001. Wow, I was way off then. Yeah. yeah. I'm not good at those. That's all right, Trey Guard. Don't worry about it. Okay, there's another one for the trash bin. Aaron, why don't you riddle me something? Trey Guard, you should have poked me. I would have looked over there. <laughs> Let's see here, Boat. In what year was the Sony PlayStation 2 released? Really? Yeah. PlayStation 2. Mm. If you get this, I will insert this card in a very uncomfortable place. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with... 1999. Oh, so close, yet so far. What year 2000. was it? 2000. 2000. 2000. Oh. I, keep, I keep this one then, right? Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'll put it in the trash over oh. here. You literally got to throw it away? Throw it away. Okay. Shall I ask one of the chat room uh, then? Yeah. This is your turn to ask the All chat. Right, chat. So now, chat is, this, is this for another wacky First prize? one to answer gets a Gamble Train postcard. All right. Okay. Are you ready, chat? Here They're we go. Ready. Who designed the top-selling PC game, The Sims? It's pretty simple, isn't it? Even I know that one. All right, and while Who we wait for them the Sims? to write, no, no, the actual designer. We need a full name. <laughs> They're getting there. They're crawling towards the correct answer. It's Will Maxis. Everyone knows that's like a Western name. <laughs> that's that's my stage name. Um, while we're waiting for them, we can go ahead and queue up. There it is. That's no, not correct. No, incorrect. <laughs> That explains why you just wrote Will. <laughs> um, let's see. The, oh. oh, yeah, go ahead. You got it. Who? Who got it for go. the people that are listening to this? Paul H. Paul H. Congratulations. Oh, it's two words. It is. Okay, sorry, my bad. Um, so, uh, Congratulations, sir. we're going to dive back into Turban Time. 
slip this bad boy What's on here. What's with your wacky hat? It's sort of like having your own little tent. Is that what that's like? Yeah, except with more glam. It's a weird choice. I wonder why they didn't like hoist these up like that. That's I don't know. Awesome. I think you know that's that's part of it. That's part of your mystique. Yeah, Will Wright was the correct answer. Next time, I will be giving the questions and announcing the winners. Oh, well, I'm not cool enough did not to do, do a very good job I'll give with you that. A break. Um, so, our next prediction: the Amiga comes back and conquers the computing world. What do you think the chances are of that, Aaron? It's low. It's low, I'm afraid. It'd be nice, but it's low. I, who, I, but it just, who would be? I will say one thing: if the current, if the current top dog Amiga people had to uh, to do that, we would probably be just as mismanaged as it was. That's true. Could you imagine time. having Cloanto and Amiga Incorporated yeah, right. our overlords? Oh my gosh. Um, here's another prediction: it says that homebrew slash indie game production doubles. I think there's a pretty good chance of that, don't you? I don't know. I wonder often if the advances in hardware that we're experiencing on the Amiga are adversely affecting the amount of people doing, uh, doing uh, games for it. So you, one thing mm -hmm. you've got when you come with the the C64, the ZX Spectrum, whatnot, you've got your walled garden. True. Right? Why do people for the most make, part? Why do still people still make 2600 games or ColecoVision games? Because you're operating in the in the area that of what you were sold with. How many games do we see that come out in the Amiga that were even the the indie games that require like an O20 or yeah. something like that? You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot. And so it, what you do is you cut out a good chunk of your audience when you do that. And so I don't I don't know if that's actually going to happen or not. I'm going to go. I hope so, but I don't know. I don't know about that one. We'll find out in 2020. Next up, same old in fighting. Cool new games. Oh, same old infighting. Okay, cool new games. There were two words there. I didn't I didn't know how to read that. I should have proof I should have proofread these a little you before need to put I proofread hat yeah. on. <laughs> and finally, somebody said I will release a technical demo of my first game. So oh, we've got a developer we here, right? Now. We don't we don't know who it is. Was it so. U-boat? I wish. Boy, do you think I don't even I can't even write 10 print hello. Yeah. That's good point. Okay. Now it's time for some amigos predictions. All right. Okay. Aaron is hailed as a savior and gr as, as grand as Valden oh. as he reveals himself as the founder of said company. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Kickstart ROMs are released as free for all, yeah. and a new Amiga is being undertaken with the help of Boat and all his students. <laughs> there is much rejoicing. You realize Boat teaches piano. <laughs> so that would be different. <laughs> different kind of keyboard than <laughs> <laughs> Aaron may tie down to the track. Aaron may tie John down to the tracks of the gamble train. <laughs> yes, yes. Although, really, how much damage could this thing do? In all honesty, hey. Amigos TV, Amiga games all day, every day. We've got so much content, we could almost do that now. That's true. That's Just true. Have a streaming channel that plays our stuff twenty four seven. Yeah. Boat will push Aaron too far and get a slap down live on YouTube. <laughs> It's already, um, I've came that close. <laughs> I've came that close. All right. Any more of these, it could be beating time. <laughs> That'll do it for the predictions uh, of this segment. It's time to move on to one of my favorite categories. This is... Da -da -da -ba -ba -da -da. The <laughs> so wait a minute, hold a second here. I'm going to pull back the curtain. You said one of your favorite categories. You didn't know which one it was. No, I, did. I, I was trying to find the... I, did, I didn't title the file correctly, so... This is the public domain homebrew category. Oh, this is a tricky one, one to vote. Well, you know, I wouldn't have thought that we did, but it's funny, we did tons more PD games than we did arcade ports. Yes. Who would have thought that that would have ever been I'm proud something. of that, too. I'm yeah. proud of that, because we're going into an area where most people fear to tread. That's true. That's true. We'll tread there. What else can we do to ourselves? Clearly, we've hit rock bottom. And the listener winner for this one was... Hangar 18. So, Hangar 18 was a game that we did as part of our public domain. Um, public domain. That's right. Um, and what was funny is that we actually heard in the YouTube comments, we heard from the writer of Hangar 18. Uh, Aaron, what what did you think of Hangar 18? I loved Hangar 18. It was it was hard, bloody. It was kind of it was a ludicrous game, mm -hmm. but it had a play. 
This is one, if you recall, I believe it had the mouse and the joystick, didn't it? Right, you were dual fisting it. And this, I've never played a game like this, ever, on any system, anywhere. It has got to be one of the strangest, but it worked. I'll be damned if it didn't work. So I'm... You know, this thing was super I deep. I liked it. This thing was, um, you know, the, you had vehicles. You could ride around in vehicles. There were tons of buildings to explore. It had a crazy sci-fi story wacky. involving aliens If anything was wacky, and, it was this game. Yeah, it was the yeah. and you were right. It was graphic. You know, it was it bloody. Was super graphic. And, uh, like, remember the guns mount on the ceiling? If you do the wrong thing, your insulin just gets right, splattered. Right, right. Unforgiving. Yeah. This was the work of a genius. Uh, I'm surprised. A mad that, genius, yeah, a mad yeah. genius. Um, I liked it so much that I chose it as my best PD game of the year. Let's make it a triple because I picked it too. Oh, this is <laughs> this might be the only category where we all three ch uh, chose the same game. Now, the listeners, you and me, all united. Now, with that said, I, I was very torn because I also wanted to include Casey Munchkin on this list, and it was on here for nomination. I loved. I love the port of Casey much. I liked all the Odyssey ports. Uh, and and so that was part of that. I liked them all so much that I couldn't pick the one I liked the most. And so I went ahead and... But Hangar 18 was so... Um, it was so out of the box. Mm -hmm. You know, that I was like, you know, I'm going to pick this over a port because this is something this guy came up with on his own. Right. Know, so, I'll, I'll, but yeah. Well, I, I did not know you picked it. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's that the only crazy. time we'll, we'll be in agreement, maybe. Not that I haven't looked at all these already. I have not. Um, I like surprises. Now it's time for our next category. We're going to move right along. You know what? Let's go ahead and go back. Since we didn't really talk about the public domain and homebrew scene that much, there was a game that was released in honor exclusively through Amigathon that was a homebrew title. Why don't we talk a little talk bit about, about that? Yeah. Casey Munchkin, right? Yeah, Casey Munchkin. Casey Munchkin, which I, I loved. First of all, uh, if you're not familiar with Casey Munchkin, it was an Odyssey two game that was their version of Pac-Man. It was so much their version that they got taken to court and had to pull it from the shelves. Uh, and it was a great game and really and it really trumped the Atari 2600 version by a, a wide margin. Among other things, it had many, many different mazes. It had a um, you could make your own mazes. You, mm -hmm. it was, uh, you could all, switch back and forth between the new version and the old version yeah, well, on the I'm fly. talking just on the Odyssey 2. Oh, on so the Odyssey 2. Th okay, so sorry. then it was brought forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fine fella, not only did he put our visage in the game, which was a, a very honor, I felt like a, a million bucks. Absolutely. Uh, but also, he did a great job of porting it. And, like you said, on the fly, you can switch between new and old graphics. They're both great. Uh, and he did a great job with yeah. the port. It was yeah, great. so we want to thank Gary James for bringing <laughs> those uh, those titles to the Amiga. Terrahawks, Casey Munchkin, and what's the other one I'm forgetting? Uh, Killer Bees. Killer Bees to the, uh, to, the, to the Amiga. And we are hopeful that he will be bringing more Odyssey 2 titles to the platform We're hoping that we get uh, Quest for the Rings. Right. I believe we sent that, that down his way. We did, we and did. So, and we, we love you, Gary, and we do appreciate you. We want to give you special mention because that was some... That was some quality work. Plus, yeah. it's had to be yanking stuff off my one of my favorite systems. So, we're going to move on to our next category, which is Best Licensed Title. Now, you know as well as I do that licensed titles can be a mixed bag. Uh, they, can, they can go really right, like the Addams Family, or they can go really wrong, like every other licensed title. <laughs> no, there are still some other good ones, but like they're few Ocean, and far like between. U.S. Gold's back catalog. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, the winner... Uh, this year's best licensed title, as voted by the listeners, is Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. All right. This was a, this was unsurprising to me. Um, I, I you know I looked at the list of licensed titles that we played. Uh, why don't you run down just quickly, just read the names of the the now, licensed title list. I will say list. this: some of these were quality games. That's true. That's true. You had Dune. Dune two. Which was, which was yeah Dune two, mm -hmm. which was. Uh, so in depth that I don't think I give this a fair shake, as I mentioned on the show. Uh, Terra Hawks, which was the uh, Odyssey 2 port, which really had zero to do with Terra Hawks. Uh, Alien 3, which actually I thought was a pretty decent game with some shortcomings. Jurassic Park, I didn't like. <laughs> uh, Lethal Weapon, I thought it was okay too. Competent. Actually. Yeah, Competent. it was not bad. And, and Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Fate and so, what about you? So I choose this one as well: Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Well, look at that! I did too. Oh, so another one. Another triple. Back to back. 
uh, unanimous choices for best licensed title. This one wasn't even close. I think uh, on on with the PD stuff. <laughs> There were there were some. It was pretty close, you know. So um, Dune Two. That's you know, the people, one that's in the conversation. Yeah, people yeah. people love that game. It was just it was too much for me. It was too I'll much going say, on. When I first started that, I was like, oh God, no, sweet Lord, sweet Lord, no, take me now. And then I got into it, and I had no idea what I was doing. And my buddy at work gave me a crash course on what the heck's going on in Dune, the Dune universe. And after that, I did accept it and enjoy it a lot more. So I think that one, uh, a healthy appreciation of the book or the movie will get you a, a long way. And I did have an idea of what was happening. So to that, I will give it credit. I think it's probably a, a, a pretty darn good game. All right. And that concludes the best licensed title. And I have written down right here below it, I have pour another glass of Irish whiskey. So we're going to crack open. What is what is that one, Aaron? This is uh, Con Con uh, Connemara. Connemara. Heated single malt. Irish whiskey. Now both this is right up your alley or mm -hmm. down your valet, mm -hmm. if you will. It's got that peated thing. Going yeah, on. yeah. I love Ally Scotch whiskey, and I didn't know that they made an Irish version of it. So I'm looking forward to uh, to trying this that. out here. Boaster. The bottle is very, very now, fancy. I'm sure this is going to be earthy. Earthy, you know soily, earthy kit. Smoky. If you will. I'm going to go ahead and get me a swiggy. Just oh yeah. Just a little drink. <sighs> that that peat just cuts right through your nose up to your brain. Nothing is more delectable to the palate than basically a liquid peat moss. <laughs> Absolutely. I was just thinking, man, I could go for some moss. <laughs> you know. It's like the guy from the IT crowd, right? No. I was thinking, uh, what's the chick's name? The real incredibly thin girl from the UK, Moss. Kate Moss? Kate Moss. Mm. That's her. Well. I could go for that. Cheers. To Kate Moss. And the guy from uh, the IT crowd. Wow. Amazing. <clears throat> he took a sip. Amazing. It's just like curly. That was smooth going down. It's got a bite. She bites. Uh, but it does taste like, like weird dirt. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> so if you're into that weird dirt flavor, I mean, that's got a weird taste, but. It's got the taste of, uh, it's the taste of Ireland. No. I'm trying to place what that tastes like. If you get off the plane in Dublin and you just bite the air, that's, ever, what, you ever, that's what you taste. You ever get the wax from a candle in your mouth? Rarely. Sort of like that, yeah. I'm not. When has that happened to you? I don't want to get into it, but... It seems weird. Listen, sometimes you're sitting around. The next thing you know, <laughs> you got a candle wax in your mouth. And it, I, I, probably best not to say. Okay, okay. Well, Aaron, it's time for another round of right. trivia. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> So, um, why don't you lead the charge this time and ask me a ditty? Oh, man. That moss is getting to me, Boat. <laughs> All right, Boat. This is a long one. Ron Gilbert and Tim Schafer created The Secret of Monkey Island in 1990. The first in a series of point-and-click adventure games set in the fictional version of the Caribbean during the Age of Piracy. But what is the name of the mighty pirate protagonist of the game? That would be LeChuck. Incorrect. Oh, dang it! It's Guybrush 3. It's Too Guybrush late. 3. Point. Yeah, I missed it. Dang it. All right. Guybrush 3. Wood, Mighty Pirate. Okay. Here is your question. I'm not chasing this dude to whimpery. This stuff tastes really bad. <laughs> He's a wimp. Mm -mm. This is what real, real drinking is. It's just putting a big clump of dirt in your mouth and liking it. In my it. opinion, this is, if you ever go to like Swamp Things apartment, he's got a, a bar with just sitting on it. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. What fictional continent is the Bethesda Softworks RPG series The Elder Scrolls set? Morrowind? Tamriel. Oh, I don't know. I don't play that stuff. All right. Do Hit I, me again. Do I lose? You lose. Damn it. Ugh. No, y'all, you get the multiple choice. Ha ha ha. Mario Kart 64 was the first of the series to be rendered in 3D. In the multiplayer battle mode, a player is eliminated when A, their last balloon pops, B, when they get hit by a Koopa shell, C, when they run out of coins, D, when they hit the barrier. A. That's right. Ha ha. Another one for the pile. And your final question, I don't Aaron. Play that. Homie, don't play that. What could Sonic the Hedgehog not do in the video games that real hedgehogs can? 
due to mistaken information about the mammal by the game developers. Is this a multiple choice? So the, yeah, so this is, let, let, let me let, dumb it down just a tad, because it's kind of confusing. What can Sonic not do that real hedgehogs can do? A, fly, B, swim, C, make friends, D, run faster than the speed of sound. So this is what a real hedgehog can do. They but, can swim. Correct. Very good. One for your watch, pile. Watch a lot of Nature Channel on that one. <laughs> okay, why don't you take the helm here, Snotty, since All you right. think I did such a poor job. I'll drink this dirt juice. Okay, chat. Get ready. This is a tough one. Remember, first one to answer in the chat gets a Gamble Train postcard. Which 1986 Nintendo game is set in the fantasy land of Hyrule oh, and centers on a boy named Link? These questions are too easy, Boat. You, I, I didn't Except write them. Some of them. Did you know the one about the hedgehogs? You know the answer to that one? Well, you could deduce that one. All right, Treyguard 1982, you are the winner. Kung Fu. <laughs> Jason he points, almost. He points for amusement. You have all made me laugh. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we pass on to our next round of predictions. And now we pass on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm passing on when I put on this. I hope I'm buried in this thing. You look great. Oh, trust me, you're burying yourself all right. <laughs> My God. I can't get it. There we go. It's hard to get centered. You need to work on your accoutrement. I don't think I need to do any work at all. Look at me. I look great. Mm -hmm. You look like a tool. And a Amiga. <laughs> Amiga. Our, at least our feathers match. Mm -hmm. Here's an Amiga prediction for you, Aaron. Get ready. I'm ready. Commodore will buy Apple, so this would in, <laughs> this would entail Commodore coming back wow. into existence. <laughs> Obviously, wherever this was written, weed and dope, everything legal, totally legal. And relaunch the Amiga line of machines. Microsoft will see the error of their ways and throw in the towel. Amiga wins, and everyone is happy. Well, that is nice. I like that. I'm going to say that's not going to happen, but I like it. <laughs> we'll find out next year. Um, here's somebody's prediction. I'll finally get my 2000 working. So, good luck. I hope you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> infighting will cause the closure of some random Amiga website. Bam! I think there's a pretty good chance of that. <laughs> In fact, if we tussled right now, we could make that, we could predict what's that pretty could happen. Uh, the Amiga becomes the number one gaming system. So I think that- it becomes. It already it's is. It's already, already is. is. Clearly. And Yo, the final, no. the final one. This is probably the most likely to come true of them all. All Amiga hardware becomes twenty percent more expensive. Bam! <laughs> we have a wiener. Yeah. Now it's time for some Amigos predictions. All right. Things we will do in the future. First one. Amigos takes the angry video game nerd to court for breach of copyright. <laughs> I do know a couple of lawyers, but I don't think they'd go for that one. Maybe not, maybe not. Also, since we played his game show, we probably wouldn't get too well. Boat becomes a pop star and leaves the Amigos. Eh, you never pop know. Pop star. You never know. I do have if the figure play, for like, it. If you like trombone or something, I could see that. I could play trombone and sing. You could be like... At a, the same time. Who was the guy, uh, shoot, the trumpeteer that used to play, the buglist? What the hell is his name? He, he, da, da, Louis da, da, Armstrong? Da, da. Dun, 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 dun. Herb Albert? No, never mind. Can move on. What I'm were you singing? Thing. You know, do do do. Oh, Chuck Mangione. Boop, boop, that's him. He didn't sing though. I know, but I'm saying he was a trumpeteer. I want to sing. Oh. I was born to sing. Oh. Um, the Amigos will reach 1,500 subscribers, and Boat finally falls in love with Walker. You never know. I believe half happen. that could happen. I could and turn you, the corner on if Walker. If you could come to get your good senses going, <laughs> you know, we're already. Well on our way to 1,500 subscribers. That's true. So that's, true. that's a there's a real good chance of that unless they really screw up. Well, the next one says 2,000 subscribers. Oh, <laughs> it could happen. You never know. We could get hot. John auctions off dinner with Aaron, Tim Cook style, without his knowledge. Strangers show up expecting dinner, get quavers thrown at them instead. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, I, and I recite that speech that's in the rule book for the quavers. It's a remember fascinating that? story. Yes. I do. I do. Um, less hair, more beer. I like that. I like that. Good chance of that. Half that. 
Um, boat gets lost in Ireland, and Aaron finally unleashes from the top rope in response to the gamble train. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Later, Damn. boat is banned from re to Europe after the incident. <laughs> that almost is a certainty. <laughs> You're going to get lost in Ireland. That's for darn sure. And that's because uh, too many pints. Too many pints. Because I know, he, Boat's already told me he's just going to go over and go, there's like a big promo in the show, <laughs> or promoting our stuff. He's going to go over and just go buck wild over there. Crazy. Show them how they do it in West Virginia. Show That's the true. Irish how we do it. That, I, I, you won't last 10 minutes. No, no. If you're going to show the Irish how we do it in West Virginia, go over there with a bunch of heroin. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is, this is, this yeah. is how you do it this old school. This is how we do it. Um, so, our next category of awards... This is a category that we do often in real life, best sports best category. Sports. We're always out on the fields, on the pitches. That's true. Yep. So, um, Aaron, we had we didn't play that many sports games either. We only played three sports games this year. And they're all, you know, your nerdy or sports. <laughs> you want to you want to give them a rundown <laughs> of um, sure. of of what games we played. So, best sports title. We had Jockey Wilson's dots. Mm-hmm. PGA, a European tour golf. Mm-hmm. Arcade pool. That was very good. You sounded just like Dick Van Dyke. Like, huh? <laughs> so, the winner of this game is... <laughs> what game? The winner of the best sports category is yeah. PGA, European tour golf. Mm. I love this game. I thought this was great. Uh, this is probably the best um, golf game on the Amiga. I like it more than leaderboard, although leaderboard is very good. Looks good, plays well, great music, real golfers, real courses. What did you think? I thought it was good. I liked it. It's not my favorite Amiga golf game, but it's very good. What is your favorite Amiga golf game? I think Lynx. I think it's a very good mm. game. But this is good too. Yeah, yeah. And I do like world class leaderboard as well, for simplicity's sakes. But I didn't pick this one. You didn't pick and this I'm one. And I'm guessing you did, didn't you? I did not pick this one. Oh, you didn't pick it either. You My it. favorite game. Come on. Jockey Wilson's Darts me. Challenge. This is what you picked for your favorite and game? And I'll tell you why. I thought you buried this when we played it. No, I love this game. So Jockey Wilson brings a lot of things to the table, mainly himself. Jockey Wilson. Before I... I know where you're going. Before I, uh, before I played this game, I didn't know anything about the professional <laughs> dart scene in England and how great it was. Yeah. Especially the professional dart scene in England back in the 80s when things were real. Yeah. So as soon as I started playing this game, I was like, boy, I want to find out more about Jockey Wilson. Yes. So I went down the world's largest YouTube rat hole and watched nothing but old darts championships from the 80s. And this is back in the day where they had them at pubs. People were drinking, people were smoking. Jockey was dancing around like a fool, rubbing it Big in people's tubby, faces. Goofball. Yeah, There was the Jockey Wilson song that was on top of the pops where they were showing pictures, even though it was Jackie Wilson, they, they showed pictures of Jockey Wilson. He was a huge star. And I'm sure, I know you watched the hideously depressing documentary. Oh, yes. Where they went I back watched to it too. Jockey Wilson's hometown, and it looked much like our, <laughs> our town here in West Virginia. I will <laughs> Very say, similar. by your reasoning, stupid as it is, uh, in terms of that, yes, this would be my favorite game of the year because I, uh, uh, I did learn a ton about Darts and Jockey Wilson, and it was, it was a whole different world. A whole, it was all like the schnooka uh, t uh, when we did that one. I learned a ton of stuff about snooker. Yeah. And now I've learned tons about darts. And, right. And much like yourself, I will. I still watch more snooker than I do darts. Yeah. But I will occasionally hop in for, and because I'm more familiar with the rules of snooker than I have darts. I tell you, there's nothing better than pouring yourself a fine cup of spirits. Moss based. Turning the lights down low and putting down a 70s darts or snooker match mm -hmm. and just letting the world go away. Mm -hmm. It's great. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's great. I like to smoke a box of menthol cigarettes while I do it. Oh, yeah, just to get the get... ambiance. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, just load it up. Get the cheapest <laughs> Three or four at a time. I like to gain 300 pounds, smoke a box of cigarettes, and drink the cheapest food. And then you just find. immediately have a heart attack when and you just, finish. You... And just, I can't tell you the number of times Teresa's has walked into the back room and there's darts stuck all over the door. <laughs> and I'm laying in a pool of vomit with smokes hanging out of me. That's oh, how you do it. That's the real. So, Aaron, what was your pick for best sports game? I actually went in a whole other direction here, Boat, and I picked Arcade Pool. Did you now? I did. I thought this played a pretty darn good game of pool. And as much as I like Jockey Wilson and his career, and I like learning about darts, the game was trash. 
this is a proper game with actual playing. I can't fault you there. So there you go. And as much as I like PGA, it wasn't my favorite golf game, whereas this is at least amongst my favorite pool games. So there you go. I went with arcade pool. Uh, Graham says that with the, with the Conamara, he says if you smell it first and then taste it, you can get past the smoke and seaweed and discover pear, apple juice, honey, and spice. That's what that aftertaste is. Yeah. Hideous, hideous <laughs> seaweed. Now I get it. Who in God's name was sitting around the house? And they're like, you know what? You know what you could put in booze? Let's go out and dig a bunch of seaweed up out of the sewage-filled, like, lake out back, and we'll stick that in here, too, with the moss. Man, you just don't... What you don't, we just eat mud? You don't Let's appreciate good seaweed. Of mud. You're right. You'd never last in Japan. No. Well, no. <laughs> but not for that reason. <laughs> All right. Well, it's time for our next category, Aaron. That and, category was a little weak. Well... That's true. We, we didn't do it. Again, just like, with, we love sports. just like with the arcade games, Amigos Game Selection Committee members, we implore you, give us more sports. There give us that more many arcade sports. games. I think we've a lot of sports we have. Game, we, we? we did a lot in our first four years. Um, so the next category is, now this is, this is one, whenever this genre comes up, I always get a little antsy. This is the best strategy title I get category. antsy too. <laughs> is, I get real antsy. It's like, oh God. I yeah. can do this in a week. I'm screwed. So strategy games are um, were never really my cup of tea. They were uh, even in my best days. I didn't play a whole lot of strategy games. But one of the great things about this show and the game selection committee team is that <laughs> we're forced. <laughs> We were you just took the words out of my mouth. We're violently plunged into the realm of strategy games. Right. Sink or swim, boat. We call each other in a fate attempt to understand what's happening to us. And the winner, the listener's choice of best strategy game is... We're going to be different on this one, I know. I actually forgot to add <laughs> Amazon. it. Amazon. I forgot to add it to the playlist. We're struggling. Man, nothing. this is when you take a big swig of moss right now. <laughs> I'm going to do, who was it, Grandma? Grandma, I'm going to follow your lead here. Yeah. L smell, smell the pear. I smell the seaweed. I smell the, I smell the mud. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> you didn't get the pear? You didn't get the spice? It, the pear is overpowered by the mud and moss. Oh. Well... That's got to be what turtle wax tastes like. Let me down a big bowl. Let me cleanse your palate a little bit <laughs> with the Settlers, the listener's choice of best strategy title. What did you think of the Settlers, Aaron? Um, it was beyond me, Boat. <laughs> if it was the Settlers of Catan, I'm in. This Settlers, again, with one week, I, I tried. God, Lord knows I tried to understand what was happening. Well, I can tell you a little bit about the Settlers because whenever there's a game that I don't understand... I do a live stream of it, and people come into the chat and they tell me how to play it. I will say, I watched your live stream with this, and I pointed at the screen and laughed for about 15 <laughs> minutes. That's not the only game that happened with this year. When you just sat there going like, Hurr? yeah, help so, me, chat room. This no. game is a very uh, in-depth, slow-moving city-building game. Real time, almost in real, real time. <laughs> Where the, the nails are you pounded are in one at a time. In real time. Right. However, this game does have an incredible amount of charm. Uh, the, the settlers, as they move up and down the paths, are amusing. There is all the kinds of different mechanics. This game, the biggest thing that it suffers from is in an effort to make it more translation friendly, they took out all of the text. And so unless you have a manual open to understand what all the symbols mean, it's not going to be a good time for you. If only the people that did the PCFX would have followed suit. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yes, you're right. I mean, it's it's very, it's very, we play a lot of German board games, don't we? Mm -hmm. This is a very oft used uh, gimmick that right. on these board games where they just don't have any dialogue at all and they have pictures with arrows going like this. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Hose needs actual, I need words. I need, <laughs> help me, please. You know, I'm not going to pan this game. I'm not going to. I just, it was, I just didn't get it. Did not get it. Well, what did you get, Aaron? What was your strategy game this of the, the year? This is the biggest surprise of this year. Right here, I'm going to announce it. Okay, let's hear My it. My weird affinity for Sim Life. Oh, yes. Was, oh, yes. I would never have bet in one million years that this would be the game that I would choose. But 
And trust me, when I loaded this up and 400 menus came up, I was just like, it was the exact opposite of the Sattler. It's just like text everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I sat there like, Ugh. But thank God for one guy on, on YouTube that had enough decency to be like, okay, here's how you start this game, and here's what all these menus and stuff mean. <laughs> and I watched this thing, and I followed along, and then I played on my own, and I'll be darned if I didn't like it. Uh, now, uh, is this going to supplant Stunt Car Racer in my in my usual cycle with me? Because no. But I do have a healthy appreciation for this game, the amount of, of thought that went into making it, the amount of talent it took to come up with a way to do this. Mm -hmm. It's a very impressive game. And uh, this, for me, uh, when it comes to simulated, this is simulating life. Can't trump life, Boat. So I'm going with sim life. I did not like this game. I thought it was pretty crap. See right um, here? Here's where sim life was. You can't see because of the screen. It was above <laughs> you, Boat. It was above, above. It was too hard. I will never it. discount that as an option for any game that I dislike. But I thought that it was, it was for a simulator, it was fine. For a game, it was it was it was trash. Don't wallow in your own ignorance, boat. I'll. That's what am I going to do all day? Good point. I wallow in my own crap. Like <laughs> <laughs> um, my pick for the best strategy game was also the Settlers. Um, there weren't there. To be honest with you, there weren't a whole lot of games to choose from <laughs> in this category. Um, I I enjoyed playing the Settlers because I thought I had more charm than History Line. History Line was okay. History Line would be number two for me. It would be my number two as well. Uh, I could see a lot of the 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 roots of uh, the Advance War series, which I played later on in the Game Boy Advance, and I like that kind of tactical style of game. Are you amusing yourself over there with a boa? I just found it's got loose. <laughs> Oh. All right. Let's just move on. I'm simulating life right now. That's exactly what I'm doing. What do you think? How am I doing so far? It's time for another round of trivia, oh, Aaron. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, I believe it's my turn to ask you first. Aaron, in the action RPG series, your favorite, Monster Hunter. Uh-oh. I've played Monster Hunter. You're going to answer me this question. What type of animal is the poogie? that you affectionately keep as a pet and dress up in the latest fashions. Um, I believe it's some sort of tiger. Incorrect. It is a pig. Um, so it's very close. I thought you'd played Monster Hunter. I played uh, Monster Hunter Try. Okay. And now I tried I'm sure to play Poogie's it. in there. I don't recall Poogie. Mm. I'm, I'm above these little idiot. I hate when they give these guys. Here's a guy that's going out and killing nothing but bosses. He's a Monster Hunter. So what do they got? Let's let's lasso. Let's 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 drop an anvil on this guy. You know, an orco or a snarf, mm -hmm. one of these little jerks. Let's give him a pig and let's make him dress it up. How can you get behind that guy? You, it's hard to get behind. Never trust a man that dresses up a pig. It's information I'm in West for life. Virginia. Trust me. <laughs> you want to read me one, Aaron? Yes, sir. Let's see if this is pig related. Question: The long-running series Ultima. Now this is crap. The long running series Ultima falls into which gaming genre? I would call that a role playing game. Thank you very much. Did you go through these? No. How do I get the pig? Did you know the answer to that? No. You think I know anything about Monster Hunter? No. No. Aaron, this should be easy. Uh, Tetris has sold more than 495 million copies worldwide making it the most popular video game ever. How many versions of Tetris have there been? I'm just kidding, that's not the question. In the, uh, in the original version of the game, what is the maximum number of lines that can be eliminated at one time? Five. Oh my gosh, four. You, you really? Four, is it four? I think we should just stop the show How right now. It? Four. Well, I was close. <laughs> Who played the original Tetris? What version of Tetris are you like playing where well, you can clear five lines? I like Weltris. Remember that one? Hatris is really my game. Hatris. <laughs> Just, I'm going to read one of the chat room. I don't care what you say. I'm okay, go one. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. You ready, chat room? This is for all the marbles. All right. Not only do you get, what was it again? What was the Gamble prize? train postcard. Boat will personally dress and, and apply makeup to your pig. <laughs> you get this one correct. What is the name of Sonic the Hedgehog sidekick? His sidekick. Do you have? There you go, Paul H. In there again with the win. H. Tails. H. P. 
Peach. PH. All right, Aaron, I do believe that you owe me one more question. Uh, do I? Yeah, I only got okay. one that last time. In Metal Gear Solid, for the PlayStation, Solid Snake's final battle is against which enemy? Creepy. Do I get multiple choices? Nope. Oh my gosh. I'm going to give you a hint. Oh, no, I know what it is. Liquid Snake. Oh, you, you did know. Thank did you. did you know that? I know a little bit about By the way, Metal Gear. Liquid Snake? Metal Gear. Liquid Snake? Yeah, they're, you know. What is that? He's like Terminator. Solid Snake is creepy enough as his name. He's the Terminator. He's here the comes, man. Watch out. Here comes Solid Snake. 1989. What does that mean? Another number. You don't know what I'm doing, do you? I, You're not a big I've public enemy known. fan? I've never known. All right. Okay. Um, More dirt. This is becoming too much for me. So we move on to <gasps> more predictions. As I don dawn the cap once again, maybe I'll put it over my ears. I can wear it like a babushka, except it, it makes me not be able to hear babushka! properly. Babushka! Don't, 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 don't. Remember the Adam's Family movie? Yeah, that's Mamushka. I know. I'm just, I'm just making it real, Holmes. Oh, okay. Um, so. What do you think about this, Aaron? Some of these could actually c take com take take so, come true. Well said. Yeah, I don't know where I was. What going are you, Mel Tillis? <laughs> you don't know who that is, do you? Dead gummit. Who is Mel Tillis? Mel Tillis, the stuttering country singer from the '80s. Was that his gimmick? Yeah, he stuttered. He was in uh, Cannonball Run. Cannonball. Ever seen that movie? Was he on Hee Haw? Yeah, absolutely. I figured he probably would be. Someone makes a port of Outrun worthy on the Amiga. Finally. It may happen sooner than you think. Ba -da -da -da. A brand new version of D-Paint comes out on multiple platforms. No. No? You think D-Paint's day is done? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although D-Paint is a tremendous program. I, mean, I still people do art with it to this day that's quite remarkable. I love it. And of course, more pointless infighting. <laughs> it's very depressing that everyone and their mother has predicted that. Clearly, a lot of these people have been on the same forums and chat rooms that I have. It's just yeah. like it's just like <laughs> start, and they just go. It's like a <laughs> it's like a Braveheart. Mm -hmm. These two opposing armies collide. I prefer the fighting spirit method, where after start, everyone immediately jumps away that from each other. That was a fighting other. spirit. Shadow oh, Warriors. Shit, yeah. What's fighting spirit? That other fighting game that I said was better, but um, you stupidly said wasn't. Oh, okay. All right, Aaron. It's time to finish up our last couple categories here. Uh, this is the best racing title. Now, we did play quite a few racing titles this past year. You want to run four. down? <laughs> four. four. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. four. It's more than the other So ones. we got Supercars, the Supercars series in a whole. So technically, there's more than one. Mm -hmm. and you'll recall that I, uh, uh, there was that Supercars 3 that I found on the PC. Right. Then you've got Test Drive 2. Microprose F1 Racing and Micro Machines. Multiple micro titles there. Hey, you gotta have them. The listener choice is Sim Life. Is Sim Life. <laughs> it's hard to get to the racing aspects of Sim Life. <laughs> you gotta move further along the ecological spectrum. That's right. Uh, this year, the winner for Best Racing Game 2018 is Microprose F1 <laughs> Racing. <laughs> So, did you like the pros, as they call it? It's hard. <laughs> it was hard. It was good, but it was hard. So, I thought it was okay. The, I didn't vote for it. This was my favorite game of the racing genre as well. Really? Uh, this game moves so silky smooth. You know, it doesn't chug along like Test Drive 2 or some of the other garbage on the list. Uh, this game is like butter. And it is hard, but... The, the game allows you to um, place in a race, not get last place. And when I'm playing a racing game, if I don't get last, I feel like I got first. Uh, the multiplayer aspects are really cool. How there's the hot seat where you play as different members on the team and you hand the controller off and they give you time to do that. That's cool. The uh, race tracks take place all over the world and they actually do have different scenery. It's not like you're driving along some endless desert or endless cliff face like some of the other games on this list. Mm -hmm. uh, this game... From Microprose, I was not expecting it because I thought Microprose was mostly in the like role playing slash adventure game genre. Microprose. Microprose um, has tons of its simulation games. Do they? I, I don't know. I, this is what I was thinking. I, I, I didn't expect good things from this game. They also did Micro League Wrestling. So, um, 
this was my my choice. The listeners agreed with me. I agree with the listeners. So, what did you choose, Aaron? Well, I had discounted all that. Okay. As garbage. Mm. And I went with the old Stallworth, a standby. Numero do so. That's Test Drive 2. Oh. I love that game. Test Drive 2. Played it when I was a kid. Played it now. Went back to it and played it more when we did the, uh, the review, the look at. Great. Had scenario discs, had card discs you could add in there. Top shelf. Always had a lot of fun with it. It was one of the early games that really brought the Amiga version. is one of the best ones. It's great. Which is, I mean... It's a great it's, game. It's fun. It's challenging. Looking at this game running now here on the screen and knowing that it is the best version of this game does not exactly speak volumes. But going from the F1 to this really brings to light just how slow and choppy this game is, how crappy the interior looks. Runs, clearly, this was ran on, on a slower Amiga. But that much said, even at this pace, it's great. What you are, my, my dear Turban Pal, is privileged. When Back in my day, we didn't have any fancy schmancy uh, like 3D graphics and stuff. This is what you got. You liked it. It was good. You got cool cutscenes where you stop at the gas station. That's cool. That is cool. You get the cops. You're cha- How many times did the cops pull up behind you in Microprose? Answer, zero times. Also true. In this game, you're running from the cops. You're like, oh, crap, he's on my tail. You're racing some jerk who's got a car and he thinks it's better than yours. You got the best car and you're there to prove it. That's what I like about this game. Fun, challenging, driver gets one guy. Listen, oh shoot, here comes a minivan. Well, so long, suckers. Wham, you ram your opponent into that minivan and you keep going because you don't care as long as your car is number one. Test drive two. You know, I can't argue with any of that. That's right. You made a really good case there. All right, we move on. Listen, minivans shouldn't be allowed on the road when you're racing these two awesome vehicles. Am I wrong here? <laughs> That's true. That's and they'll look at the dumb guy's face like, oh, I didn't expect this. What did you expect? These are hot rods, you jerk. That's, yeah, you're right. Um, best sim title. Best sim title. So this included some of the racing games and some of the other um, simulations of various other uh, vehicles and things. So you want to run down the uh, the nominations there, Aaron? We got Silent Service 2. We got Test Drive 2. We got Wing Commander and Microprose F1 Racing. Now, best sim title. Those are your choices. Bo, what do you got? What are the folks... What did the voice of the people, what did they have to say? Well, the voice of the people... The peeps. ...brought it back, back to Micropro's F1 Racing. Uh, they thought that this was the best simulation title that we played last year. Do you agree with them? I do. I do agree with them in this case. Hey, listen. Best racing title for me, that's Test Drive 2. However, when it comes to simulation, if you look at these four, and I will say, uh, I really, really like Silent Service 2. But I considered the fact that it wasn't what I would call a full bore simulator uh, with as many choices or various options that the Microprose F1 Racing brought to the table. That's why I chose it. Like you said, you got your hot seat. You got people playing this stuff like these weird email games that's still around today, weird stuff like that. You're listening. It does a good job simulating these F1 races. You know, I'm not a big F1 guy. And again, is this my kind of racing? No, but I understand brilliance when I see it, because I look in the mirror. But also, when I see this game, I think it's got a lot of um, a lot of good qualities that make it a fun game. So I'm not too proud to admit that this game was my favorite simulator of the year. Not my favorite racing game, but my favorite simulator. Well, I went a different way, and I'll tell you why. Yeah, I want to hear this. So I chose Wing Commander as my number one sim game, and I'll tell you why. Yeah, I want to hear this. Because Wing Commander is the only game on this list that is a true simulation. It covers every aspect of your life as a space shooting, fire em up uh, captain. You not only do the missions, but it shows you in the cafeteria. It shows you in the war room getting instructions. You form relationships with the other people around you. It is a true simulation in every sense of the word. Now, is the flying part of the game as in-depth as any flight simulator? No. no. But when I took into account all of the other aspects of the game, it really makes you feel like it like it really does feel. And let me tell you, because I know, when you are a outer space captain fighter planet of the nth degree, you know how it feels to be awesome. How did planet get in there? I don't know. 
And so this game is great. And I think it's the best sim title because it, if F1 would have had like a um, part of the game was like you going and like buying a car or you doing like the business transactions, that probably would have won out. But this is, it's the most fully featured simulation title, I think. I'm not going to argue with you, but I didn't necessarily think this fit the category because it's, what, it's how do we know this is a good simulation of space travel? I've never been to space. Well, have you ever been on a submarine? Uh, yeah, I have actually. Really? If you, if you, okay. Have you ever divin? I've never divin. Let's move on. <laughs> and by that I mean, hand me the black bush. Let's go. You've had enough of the. Uh... Give me a turban, boy. Yeah, I did my time. Okay. Talk okay. to the people. All right. So, um, it's time for our next round of trivia. So prepare yourself as you pour yourself. Some of the Bushmills finest. Yeah, so this one's for Graham. Yeah, you can leave it right there. Absolutely. Right. Let's spin it. Not Let's spin it the other way. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Aaron. I'm going to lead the charge this All time. Right. Actually, let's start out with the chat challenge. All right. Okay. Mix it up a little bit. Chat, this one's for you. In the genre-defining sci-fi first-person shooter Half-Life, what is the research facility called that theoretical physicist Gordon Freeman has to fight his way through? Oh my oh. gosh, Michael Ryan. As soon as I completed the question, oh boy, lots of Half-Life fans in the chat. It was like rapid fire. Michael, you, you did manage to get in there first. So congratulations uh, to Treyguard, Paul H, and Duncan Styles. For uh, for getting ready, I think. Well, that, even I knew that one. Did you? I had Half Life on the Dreamcast, mm. but not the uh, super duper secret illegal beta. I never played Half Life. It's, it's good if, you're, if that's your bag. I've heard it's genre defining. Mm. You want to ask me a question here? Mm -mm. Okay. You go ahead. I'm drinking. Mm. Okay. Here's one. All right, I'm ready. Star Fox on the SNES had a unique way of changing the game's difficulty. To do this, you had to A, go to the options menu, B, travel into the secret black hole zone, C, enter the code from a game manual, or D, select a different path. Select a different path. Correct. Ugh. I'm surprised since your normal uh, method of playing Super Nintendo games renders this game inoperable. You know what I like about uh, what you do? The first thing you do in that game is you turn around and kill that frog. <laughs> Zippy? Yeah. Is that his that name? That guy has to go. And that rabbit's asking for it, too. <laughs> I like that game, but they had to put these idiotic characters in there. They, but they go to the trouble of building this awesome game. Then it's the whole... I mean, come on. How can a bunny drive a starfire? He doesn't have thumbs. How is this happening? Maybe he has sort of alternative uh, locomotion. No. They took something that could have been awesome, they turned it to garbage. Mm. It's, a, it's a letdown. You don't like anthropomorphism, do you? Yes. Like where animals <laughs> become people? Oh, no. Does I don't that like bother that, yeah, no. yeah, you don't like it. Now, Boat, I have a question for you. Okay. My turban pal. You know, we never mentioned the PlayStation 2 on this show, but by God, we're doing it today. <laughs> Which PlayStation 2 game released in 2003, mm. this violates everything we do, was banned by several countries and implicated by the media in a murder due to its graphic violence? Uh, Grand Theft Auto 3? Wrong. Manhunt. Oh. I'm going on a manhunt. Is that, that Hall of Newts? No. That's Man garbage. Eater. Mm. I've kind of. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I do remember Manhunt. That game, the, even the cover scared me, so I did not play it. You're, you? you're very faint of heart. Tony. I am. Did you play Manhunt? No. Mm. I don't have a PlayStation. Well, I do have a PlayStation 2 now I think about it. It was also released on the GameCube, which was very controversial since that was like the family-friendly console. They needed to sell those things. They were dying, dying on the vine. It was crazy, too, because um, the GameCube controller has a, or there was like, I don't know if there was an attachment or what. One of these controllers, there's a mic on it, and it's like if you breathe too hard into the mic, like the guy comes to get you or something. Like it was, there's some kind of crazy manhunt thing that I you remember. You gotta give Nintendo about. credit, just to go off on a tangent, because when they come out with the with 
people are like highly praise the Super Nintendo controller, right? And it's great. And they're like, let's let's release this Nintendo 64 controller. It's the stupidest thing anyone's seen. <laughs> no one can make a controller stupider than this. And they're like, hold hold my beer. <laughs> Allow me to make the GameCube controller. <laughs> let's put this instead of having just round dots, mm. we're gonna have squiggles and triangles. It's, it is. It's what very were they odd. Smoking when they put that together, one big butt like a buzzer on Family Feud. Mm-hmm. Get it out. Failure. <laughs> I don't know why I gave thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> All right, uh, you get another question, Aaron. Oh boy! Oh, we should have done shots every time we got one right. Or oh got one yeah, wrong. that would. If I didn't have to uh, do my thing, what's your thing? Good. Being awesome. Oh wow! Mortal Kombat was famed for its unique graphics and over-the-top gore. To knock an enemy into the pit, players had to perform which move? Uppercut. You got it. One for the pile. All right, I get one more. I love me some Mortal Kombat, boat. And the Amiga version is underrated. What classic arcade game was the first to feature the Carpenter Jumpman who would be later change his career and be known as Mario? Donkey Kong. That's the easy one, yeah. Obviously. Nice work, we're off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, you just sneezed on me, though. No, I did that's the explosion. Awesome. Is that what that was? <laughs> it felt like snot. It was a virus was gonna... explosion. That's great, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, we're running down the trivia here. Amiga predictions. The A1200 Vampire will be released. Sweet. What do you think? Yay or nay? Uh, absolutely. I think, oh, no, released? No. But it will be produced. Okay. Prediction two. The vampire people are better at producing the things than actually releasing them. That takes a while. Prediction two. The A1200 Vampire will not be released. <laughs> yes. Okay. Same guy. No, different guys. Oh, wow, that's crazy, right in a row, eh? Yeah, well, they, I, I, I mixed them up. Thank God. Still, here's one I don't understand. Oh, boy. Still no Tabor motherboard. Tabor? You know about that? Tabor motherboard? I believe that's the, uh, is that the Amiga replacement board? Okay. I mean, I, it, again... Someone in chat can badmouth me. Okay, chat, if you know what that is, we bad we'd love me. to be enlightened. Um, and finally, the Amiga Classic will be revealed and it will have almost none of the games you'd want on it. My prediction <laughs> is the Amiga Classic will be revealed, but since it didn't license Kickstart, it won't start. <laughs> it'll be like the Amiga 1000. You have to go buy a disc from Cloanto to put in it and mm. then it'll kick right up. Now see, that would be awesome. <laughs> That's the next video we're doing right now. The Amiga 1000 Mini. Oh, so uh, Jamie Gilbert says it's the the Tabor board is the A1222. Oh, there it is. Spoke of earlier. There you go. The unreleased Power PC Amiga, been in development for years and years, will never be released. Okay. Nothing screams modern motherboard than the old Power PC. <laughs> right, cutting edge. You know. <laughs> Hope. Are you kidding me? How long has it been since that thing's? Has anyone used a Power PC for? I mean, so I, used it years yeah, ago. Yeah, they they converted in I think 2005. Uh, so it's been it's been over ten years. So, okay, um, here's some amigos predictions. All right, Aaron and Boat will get into a huge Apple related brawl and quit the podcast. It would be a short brawl, I'm afraid, <laughs> with me pounding Boat into the ground like a railroad spike. A few months later, they make up and start an Atari podcast. That actually, sounds pretty good. Atari, yeah, do that. John and Aaron declare their own country. The Empire of Amigos, where Amiga games are played all day and the Atari ST is outlawed. Oh, and see, Boat <laughs> wouldn't go for that, would you? I, I got I got no nice words to say about the ST. You know, me and Brent played a couple ST games on ARG Presents, and, well, admittedly, one of them was actual factual crap. In fact, as I recall, they were both crap, come to think of it, so <laughs> never mind. I was going to say, where are you going with this story? I, I, I don't even, to throw the eight ST people a bone. I don't even remember what your ST episode was. I remember one of the. I remember one of the games was Alcon. And oh I, right, you know, I love yeah. some Alcon. It was a terrible version of Holy Alcon. Holy smokes, does that bad? You know, is that that game? How many how many games of that did you play on your main machine? Zillions. I still play it all the time. But like you it. never once complained after all the belly aching you did on AR or on Insert Disc Two about having a vertically oriented monitor and you can't have a horizontal monitor to play vertical games. And Alcon is a vertical game, and yet it didn't bother you to play it a million times on your main cab. 
Well, I mean, come on, Boat. I've got a monitor bigger Just than saying, the original vertical You got to be consistent. Boat, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm getting ready to fulfill one of those, one of those things. <laughs> If I had to drink another glass of that dirt boss and stuff, you'd be in deep trouble. <laughs> Here's another prediction. After Pleasance unifies the rights and restarts Amiga Inc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it so far. The Amigos are brought on as heads of marketing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now listen, we love Mr. Pleasance, don't we? Absolutely. Uh, that much said, uh, and he may have a lot of pull. And I've heard pretty good things about his biz hook. Have mm -hmm. you got to read the book yet? I've not read it yet, but I've heard good things as well. Um, and he's a real, in fact, offered to come back on the show, I right. heard, and yeah. offered to give, you know, real nice guy. And we are ill-suited and ill-prepared for this man. I think so. this hat makes me very well-suited to think uh, be a head of marketing. Interview? This is where I wear to my job interview when I'm on the docket for the marketing job. You know, if you were the marketing guy and you came in wearing that hat, I would be concerned. <laughs> Not because that you're an, maybe you're crazy, but because that you're doing your marketing with tarot cards or something. Hey, you know? there's worse ways to pick winners. No. Are there? No, are there not? not no. Okay. Um, someone has predicted a 48-hour Amigathon. Oh, that man should be killed. <laughs> with more online participants. Uh, well, I mean, um, that's you never know. Mm, that's you never um, know. That's, I never thought about that. Here, here's one out of left field. Live podcast from Reno. <laughs> Have you been to Reno before? I'll wear uncomfortably short shorts. <laughs> you ever seen the Reno 911? No. Yes. Oh, yeah, I have seen that? Reno 911. Actually, the, yeah. I thought that was I a good could, show. Yeah, because yeah. I work for the police. I can wear this. I'm surprised they don't issue those, like government issue for all the police department employees. Because they have the money. Mm. In fact, we have to provide our own incredibly small shorts. That's a shame. We wear them in-house. You don't wear them when you're working on the instruments? No, you can't hmm. because they throw sparks. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, Boat finally watches Lethal Weapon, and it becomes one of his favorite movies. You know, it's not super violent, Boat. There's a lot of there's a lot of Three Stooges-style comedy in it. There, people get shot. So what? There's, like, blood splatter. You live in America. Living we see people, in get, America. people get shot every day, all day. That's it's true. It's nonstop shooting. That's true. At least this is. At least you know in this, the guys get up after they're shot because it's fake. You yeah. See? It's he should watch it. Maybe. What was the movie? I need to watch RoboCop. We should do a double header. We'll watch. I've seen weapon. RoboCop. I won't watch it again. It's oh too my much. gosh! It's too Come much. on, both. Okay, Aaron. Well, if you're liquored up. How it's about then? Would you watch it then? Probably. Okay, there you go. Um, we'll watch it second. It's time for the most controversial category of the year. When I announced Best to you... Best full frontal and game? No, Dreamcatcher already did that in his uh, article. I don't want to see Dreamcatcher naked. You don't? Well, maybe in a couple more drinks, <laughs> I might turn the corner. Um, this is the hot mess of the year category. So <laughs> that right there was suggestive. <laughs> you, you know, uh, last year it seemed like there were. A, it seems like we did a lot more bad games than we did this year. I agree. No, that I agree because we're not picking a game. Right, right. We would just pick any old things. Like that sounds pretty good. I yeah. that. <laughs> uh, you know, we could name this the Top Banana Memorial Award. Um, oh, it's not dead, unfortunately. <laughs> it can't be killed. <laughs> um, but this year. The fans voted, they let their voice be known, and they decided that the worst game, the hottest of the hot messes that we played this year was... Ugh. I can't believe this. Now, you what guys, do you think about that, Aaron? You hated Ugh? I didn't hate Ugh, no, this was the you. listeners. Talking oh, okay, the fans. you're talking to the fans. The fans, you didn't like Ugh? Didn't we, we liked Ugh. I loved Ugh, I thought it was this great. This is the caveman taxi yeah. game. Yeah, it's like Space Taxi. I thought it was a pretty clever game. We gave this a, a shining review. Yeah. You know, I mean, we yeah. don't do reviews, but you know what I mean. What do we do? I know you're the one that gets hung up on the on the uh, semantics. Listen, that one fan. That no, one that one fan was Brent. No yeah. one has ever said anything to us oh, but your brother. Man. Yeah, but he's the worst, isn't he? No, not really. I liked Ugg. I really did. I thought it was a clever game. It's, is it, did they reinvent the wheel? Get it? Because it's a caveman? That's pretty good. But I thought it was a pretty good game. Your thoughts? I liked Ugg, too. I thought it was great. There's a sequel? This is, a, this is a game I would go back to. It, again, it is a ripoff of Space Taxi on the Commodore 64 set in a prehistoric environment. I thought the, 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 uh, the little machine that you fly around is clever, the helicopter the thing. thing. You have to like crank? Yeah, yeah. Or pedal or whatever um, it was. You know, it's got tons of levels. I thought the music was good. I'm a fan of Ugg, so I listeners, like Ugg. I don't know what you were thinking, but that's what you picked. Man. And of course, these are the same people that panned the Three Stooges. That's true, that's true. Wrong! 
All right, hold Aaron. on a second, hold on a second. Okay. If anyone in the chat room picked UG, please defend yourself. Because <laughs> I would like to I'd like to hear your line on this. So you're gonna tell us what you picked for this one? Yeah, so my pick is Wing Commander. For the hot mess? For the hot mess, and I'll tell you why. We've got the 500, the A500 version playing right now on the video. This game should have never been released for anything other than AGA Amigas. This game is a hot mess of the highest degree on the stock Amiga hardware. And it's a shame because tons of people bought this game seeing it played on PCs or seeing it played on higher end Amigas and they've got their old Pokey 500 that's still kicking with their one mega RAM. They put it in and they're like, boy, there's $50 I'll never see again. This is the worst experience I've ever had in my life. I'm gonna disagree with you with a but. I'll grant you, if you had this on an Amiga 500, uh, you're going to be having a less than stellar, enjoyable experience. I, I would love to just literally physically beat you, <laughs> but you got a point. It's a jerk sort of a point that a smarmy guy in the back of the room would make, but it makes sense. You've just described me to a T. I know. The, the fact of the matter is that on stock Amiga hardware, it, below an Amiga 1200, this is, this is not good. Uh, and I, and if, why did I make that video? Because I know people have seen that and they all agree that this is horrible. It is. It, I'm not gonna say it's a hot mess, but it's not good on a stock Amiga, dead gummit. All right. You just did that just to get me, didn't you? I did it because it's a hot mess. What's your hot mess, Aaron? My hot mess of the year, this was an easy choice for me. Of all the games we played this year, one of my least favorite games, and I didn't. there were games that were worse than this one, but this was the biggest title. That was that was out that I hated was Jurassic Park. Mm. This thing put the ass in Jurassic. I didn't like it. It was a uh, uh, bizarre wandering affair. It was too small. <laughs> it was weird. The levels were too hard. It had problems. You had to deal with those stupid infernal machines where you had to log onto the BBS style interface. Mm -hmm. I didn't like any part of this. And I'm thinking to myself, you've got Jurassic Park. This is a movie with big, huge animatronic dinosaurs. Not animatronic. That'd be really crazy. Big, <laughs> it's huge like a Five Nights at Freddy's thing. CGI dinosaurs. There's all this awesome stuff going on. This is the best you can come up with. An overhead, like, you know, no good. Zero fun. This was one of my least favorite games we ever looked at. I did not. I believe me and Brent had to look at this one. I think you read it. I was, yeah, I, I chose this week to go to Paris. Oh, I yeah. think I got the... <laughs> I got the better end of the stick there. Yeah, we got the shaft on that one. And so poor Brent, I'm going to speak on his behalf because he didn't mm -hmm. like it either. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this was no good. So I'm going to give you a pass on this because you weren't here to play it. But if you ever feel froggy. Oh, I watched the I watched the video. I watched your episode. I will I will not be checking yeah, out Jurassic Park. Yeah, it was Party no good. I didn't like it. And I know this this uh, this game has its uh, its uh, fan base. There's a few of them out there. Get seek help would be my would be my advice to them. Didn't like it. This was my bad. And think about the money that this. And if you look at the staff that was involved, this was like 15 million people that were behind this. I remember doing research for this. And they had like it was a never-ending supply. And the amount of money spent on it, there was all this money dumped in, and this is what they came up with. No, no, thank you. Hot mess of the year. All right. Well, Aaron, we talked about the worst game. It's time to talk about the best game. So the listeners chose as their game of the year. Comes as a surprise because it swept the most categories. Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. So you can't you can't you can't bad mouth it for this one, can you? You know, I was not expecting this game to win. To be honest with you, it's I figured a, it's that, a very legendary and popular game. Yeah, man. I just figured it would be. To be honest with you, I would have put Wing Commander as far as what I thought the audience would have liked most. Yeah, I, I would have thought they would have voted for something like Wing Commander just because it's more iconic. It's not a licensed title. I don't know if it's more iconic. I mean, it's this is a pretty iconic game in the Amiga community. Um, what can you say? It's a good game. You know, again, much like a Monkey Island, uh, and people love these games. And plus, I will say one thing: these games have going for them is they're uh, longevity. They can you can play these games then twenty years later, and they still are fun, they hold and clever, up. and mm -hmm. the dialogue's good. The graphics are good. People love indie, you know. Right. Even after the Crystal Skull, they're still with him. And uh, the, although that another one of those, and this might not win uh, this category. But you know, I, I got nothing bad. I didn't pick it, but I don't have anything bad to say about it. What did you pick? My game of the year was your hot mess of the year, <laughs> Wing Commander. I think this game brings everything to the table. 
It brings action. It brings. Uh, it gives you choices. It, it gives you fun space combat. It gives you a backstory. It gives you interesting characters, character development. There was this game. Like I said, this was like a Cinemaware game with better with a, with game a game. Play. Yeah. yeah, with better gameplay. I mean, again, if I put this in a competition against Wings, I'm going to pick Wings. But even it trumps Wings in a lot of ways in terms of the. Uh, you know, where in Wings you had sort of cutscenes that were basically just reading the guy's diary. This mm -hmm. gives you, you know, actual cutscene, dialogue, things you can do. Right. You know, uh, uh, it's a it's a very well done game. They spent a lot of time and money getting this thing down, and it worked. And for me, again, on on a computer that meets the specifications to make this thing run halfway decent, this is a fun game. It's still fun uh, to go back and play it. I remember when this came out for the Amiga, and I was very pleased because. You know, there was a time where you saw these sorts of games going away. And uh, so, and the Amiga pulled it off for the most part. Uh, and so, this was my game of the year. This is my favorite game well, of the, the year. And this game was really the springboard that allowed games like X Wing <laughs> and TIE Fighter to be made. Which we didn't get. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And so, and that was a real bummer. Uh, but uh, I think this game's a lot of fun. And, it, and this game really had stuff that those didn't have, which is the in between scenes, the scenes with your wing mates and the enemy. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And it, it gave the, uh, the fighting's a lot more interesting when there's depth behind it, when there's a reason to be doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, this was my favorite game we did this year. Cool, cool. Well, my favorite game is, I, well, I, I sort of let it slip way back at the beginning of the show. My favorite game was Flight of the Amazon Queen. <laughs> Uh, rarely has a game uh, charmed me as much as this one did. Uh, everything, like you said, the interface, this is probably the best point-and-click interface that I've ever used. Um, the, the story was great. It's funny. The game was beautiful. It's the best animated point-and-click adventure I've ever played. Um, there's nothing, I've got no bad things to say about it. Um, the only bad thing about it is they never made a sequel. You know, uh, this was a one-and-done sort of thing. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was fantastic. Love Fly the Amazon Queen. <sighs> You know, let me ask you, what? And, and you know, I love this game. Mm -hmm. All right, and this was this crossed my mind in a lot of these categories. And when we, I mean, you know as well as anybody, when we came upon this uh, first, I was not looking forward to it, and I wasn't looking forward to a lot of these adventure games. And, I, and I've cool, I have warmed to them over the year. Mm -hmm. um, but what made this your pick over the crowd favorite, Indiana Jones? Um, uh, because again, that's a game with charm, a great interface, uh, a very well-known characters. What what gave this the nod? I've always favored the mundane over the epic. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, games where you have to get the crystal skull and save the world and prevent utter calamity. I don't know. It just seems like that's part and parcel for every video game ever. This is something that's totally off the wall, wacky. Um, you know, offbeat, uh, different than what you would pick when you say, "Hey, let's let's make a plot for a game." And that's the that's to me that's what charm is all about. It's something unexpected. That's what puts it over the top for me. I'm going I liked it more than Indy too, and I know this is sacrilege, and I'm sure it's a shorter and simpler game. But well, that that's part of it too. I you know having a game that you can like when you watch the playthrough of this, I think it can be done in less than two hours, and the indie playthroughs are all about four, so it's twice. Well, as Well, I mean, long. you get less game. You got to mm -hmm. look at the value you get for it. But um, the, I like the like I love the very beginning of this when you're going through that whole p puzzle to get it back out of that room, mm -hmm. you know, and you're trying, and your rival's there, and the girl. It was it was I like the shootout, which was it was dopey but amusing. Um, I like this show. I, I, yeah. Uh, the I like I just I agree I, I'm with you I I like this a lot and this uh, of this genre this was you know again I I didn't pick this for uh, RPG of the year because I, I got away with picking degeneration but that much said this game in terms of a point and click is probably my favorite one that we've ever played it's got to be right up there I just thought it was really clever and it was it was beautiful and colorful and it was fun and fresh you didn't feel like you were it was not uh, the least bit depressing right. It was nice. It, it looked beautiful. I liked a lot of it. So, I mean, I can't fault you. I cannot fault you. And this was in the top couple for me as well. So, a good choice, Poster. All right. And that will do it for Game of the Year. Not a bad choice. I think, I think, they're, I think, all, I think those three choices are all good choices, you know, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. Um, surprise of the Year. 
This is one I just surprised you with today. Why don't you give me yours first? Well, my surprise of the year was the whole Amiga Ireland thing. Uh, never in my wildest dreams would I think anybody cared about this show that much to pay for one of us to go across the sea to a foreign land and represent the show at a uh, one of the biggest Amiga conventions in the world, if not the biggest one. So uh, the uh, the GoFundMe thing, the response from all of the people that donated uh, was just really incredible and uh, I do not deserve it. So that was a, a, a huge surprise and a, and, a, and a great surprise. That was mine. That's a good choice. I would go in a similar direction and I'm gonna choose uh, the uh, the uh, overall Amigathon. Um, when we decided, I don't know if we ever decided this. I don't know how it was decided we're going to do twenty four hour Amigathon. Honestly, I don't remember. I, I don't know how the hell that happened. I, no one asked me. Yeah, I, I just told you it was going to happen. That's and so, uh, the fact that we were able to not die, mm -hmm. and and if we survived all those trials, I mean, that was like we could do an RPG on that just that day and all the crap that went down and the fact that after all that crap and all the f f and lost footage and blown r cable modems and all and just being up 24 hours doing that and and people hung with us and we did real we did better than i would have ever guessed for charity uh and so that was a surprise to me that not only could we pull it off uh, because really we didn't really pull it off. We were just two doofuses. But the peep, the people, the peeps, the 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 fine folks that tune in, uh, they put down their money, their hard-earned cash for charity, and uh, uh, and I, it was a total success, and, and it was very gratifying. One of the most gratifying things I've done for a long time, to be completely honest with you, uh, it was it was very nice to to be a part of it. Uh, I don't know what if we could ever do it again. <laughs> I don't know, man. That was a real brutal uh, 24 straight hours of pain. There, there will be some format changes in upcoming Amiathons, yeah. for sure. Yeah, the new version of it will be, uh, you know, they, part of the video footage are just me in bed. <laughs> me getting up, me having a cold one, you know. Then we'll... <laughs> the normal that. routine. That's right. We'll, we'll come up with something. Yeah. But uh, that was, I will say, after going 24 hours like that and, and seeing the total sum that was raised... Uh, by, by our good buddies, it was very nice, and, and we appreciate everyone that kicked in on that or tuned in or whatever. We had a lot of fun uh, putting that together, and it also uh, it kicked off the second half of the year in a big way. And we've had a real, we've had a very successful six months. I mean, uh, easily, probably more. This, we've had more success in the last six months than we probably had for the entire run of the show up to that point, mm -hmm. haven't we? I mean, it's yeah. just been crazy successful. And I feel like the, the, the boulder's rolling downhill, the Indiana Jones-style boulder. And so it was a good kickoff uh, for us as well. So we actually got something out of it, too. So I'd say that was my surprise of the year. Awesome. How's that? Um, now, Aaron, uh, we've talked about this before. And uh, I don't know if you are going to announce your grand plan for this coming year. Oh, yes, the grand plan. Well, I'm going to do the official way. In. I'll go ahead and announce it now. Okay. So I was talking to Boat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna even go into the backstory. So I'll be brief. You can take as long as you want, man. So, it's your show. So you know, it's my show. Get out. <laughs> so I was telling Bo, I was like, you know, I was, I was thinking that we don't have, we don't do our charity event for another until July, so seven months. I was like, what can we do for charity? <clears throat> and so I've been watching a lot of lucha libre, which is Mexican wrestling. And in Mexico, they have these big matches that are hair versus mask. The loser either gets his head shaved or the other guy gets his mask pulled off. Well, we don't have masks or hair, do we? I was like, what do we have that we could wager up against a charitable event? <laughs> well, comedically, I thought to myself, well, I've got a bunch of fat, and I was right. So, I'm wagering fat. And in this case, I'm going to call this Amigo Aaron's Weight Wager Boat. So, A-A-W-W. -W. I like right. it. That's right. So, and the wager will be as, as to follow. Um, I am going to lose, I'm going to weigh in, officially weigh in, and then I will take bids on how much people will pay, give to charity per pound that I lose between now and the Amigos Marathon 4th of July Spectacular, okay, which is about seven months. Uh, and so, for example, if you were to bid a dime, 
you would give a dime for every pound I lost. If I lost 10 pounds, you're in for a buck, right? And the cutoff is 100 pounds. Okay, so you'd be in for 10 bucks as a dime. A pretty fair deal. And we'll worry out, we'll figure out how we're gonna do the actual donation part of this. But that's not a wager, you know? Some guy could bid a dollar for every pound I lose, and I could lose 10 pounds, or I could actually gain weight. <coughs> you know how us fat guys are. Well, I might hit the buffet, you know? So this is where the wager comes in. I'm willing to wager that I can lose at least 100 pounds between now and July. So, here's the wager. For every pound I come up short of a 100 pounds boat, I will give to charity $5. $5 a pound. So, if I'm a big fat jerk and don't lose any weight at all, I'm in for $500 well, That's to major money. $500, and you know I'm po, and I also don't like to give up cash. So, I'm willing to put up my money that I can lose 100 pounds before the 4th of July. I'm hoping we can get some people to kick in to see that, uh, to support me financially, not me, but the charity, mm -hmm. and say, listen, I think this guy might be able to do it. I'm going to give him a quarter for every pound he loses. That's not too much, a quarter. We'll tally up all the scores at the end of, at the, at the, end of the run in July, and then we will put out, we'll put out the tab. You may not be in for anything, all right? You could make this weight wager and not be in for one single dime, and poor old A has got to foot the bill. But I think I can lose 100 pounds between now and July, and I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is. It's Amigo Aaron's weight wager. We'll have all the details coming soon, along with the weigh-in, but uh, it should be entertaining, if anything. And uh, every time you see me eating a Twinkie or having a piece of pizza, you can mock me incessantly, Boat. That's part of the plan. So that's the goal. Weight loss for charity. What do you think? I love it. I love it. I think it's a, a great idea. It's a great way to uh, motivate yourself and also motivate the fan base to, uh, to to kick in. And it's a great way to kind of uh, jumpstart the Amiga to or the Amigathon totals too. That's so. right. We want to give. Uh, and we're gonna, I think we're going to do it for the same charity we did the, the Amiga right. a Marathon on, which is the Children's Miracle Network. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can't beat them. They're a great charity. And everything that you will kick in on this was going 100% to charity. Not we don't we're not getting a single thin dime. This is just for charity. Again, Amigo Aaron's Weight Watch wager. We'll kick in the details in. Yeah, and the chat is uh, entirely the chat's blowing up with support. So um, liquid diet, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> okay. Um, well, as we wind down our party, Aaron. Um, I just want to thank everybody for hanging out with us uh, in the chat, in the YouTube chat. We got uh, Graham Vebke, Chris Forrester, Paul H., Jason Warns, Duncan Styles, Ricky DeRocher, Will Williams, Picard 2005, Edvin Helen, Jamie Gilbert, Trey Guard 1982, Michael Ryan. Uh, anybody that has not commented but is watching us now, thank you for That's new uh, names in there. Yeah, don't UK I? retro gamer Henrik Anderson. They all they all pop up uh, whenever I start reading the names. Thanks for thanks for being here and uh, and and being with us on on New Year's Eve, even though it's not quite New Year's Eve yet. Our New Year's Eve show. Um, be sure and spread the word if you can. Tell all of your Amiga-loving friends that this podcast exists. Word of mouth is our best uh, our best way for us to, to grow. Um, and, uh, of course, if you'd like to support the show on Patreon, patreon.com slash Amigos Podcast. I'm sporting the Amigos Supporters hoodie. That is available at everythingamiga.com slash swag. Looks good, doesn't it? Thank you. It's very sharp. Yeah, yeah. It's got all of our Patreon supporters on it, the country they hail from, all on a Cincy pitch. Uh, so, and it's real warm and cozy. Very clever, but yeah. you're a very clever boy. And so, um, and finally, just again, you know, thank you for, for being with us and being part of the Amigos community. Special shout out to all of our uh, Discord folk. Uh, Discord's awesome. They always make me happy when I get in there and listen to their wacky antics. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, last week, Aaron, the Amigos Patreon song challenge was the Christmas song by Nat King Cole. People often compare me both in looks and voice to uh, the Mr. NKC. I was thinking old King Cole. Mm, yeah. The merry old soul. Yeah. Um, 
Stefan jo Johansson, aka Jost80, Matthew Perron, and Paul Kitching all guessed correctly. Perron. So uh, Very good. This week we are not going to do a uh, Patreon song challenge. Uh, I say old Lang Syne or something like that. Well, we're going to uh, play old Lang Syne here. And uh, I just thought that I would uh, sort of make sure that I give each of our supporters their due. Um, this is, uh, sometimes as I'm struggling to get through the song, Every I, time. I gloss over some names. Horribly. So I wanted to make sure that I, I read everybody's name nice, loud, and clear to show our, our support. I'm gonna pour you a little one both for All right, the road. just a little one for the road. So here we go. Retro Man Cave. Love Tim Drew. Yeah, Retro Man Cave, awesome. Tim Drew, who is the guy that does The Future Was 8-Bit. Oh, also great. Yeah. God. Daniel Williams. Robert Edgerton III. Simon Rose, showrunner for Black Mirror. <laughs> Joseph Harrison. Joe Ski Rock. Kyle Etter. Flack, a.k.a. Rob O'Hara. New book out. That's Bye -bye. right. Yep. Go buy his book. Howard Nibs, Matthew Larimore, Evil Matt. He's evil, folks. This is his time of the year. Andy Craig, Shonzo, Darren Lomax. Shonzo! <laughs> I like the way you said that. Thank you. Very good. Colin419. And the 419. Yep. Barkbit. It has nothing to do with the dog, it's a small piece of tree. Makes sense. Rollin Burke, our favorite astrophysics professor from Canada, who writes us such great emails. He's amongst emails. my favorite astrophysicists from yeah. Canada. Um, Andrew Monks. Joe the Zombie, our favorite undead supporter. Yes. Uh, hope the house renovation is going well, Joe. Look good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John Cook. Dan Ross, composer of the Amigos theme song. Mm. Leaf Killon. The Leaf. Mm-hmm. Alan K. Bob. It's not K. Bob. That's not like he's from down the street. Shish K. Bob. Is that Alan, how you say it? Alan K. Bob. Oh. It's like, <laughs> don't call him that. Uh-oh. Song's out. That's all right. We're starting it up again. <laughs> quick. Quick. Don't lose the illusion. <laughs> Let's see. Chicote. Ooh. Mm -hmm. What's that mean? It's, uh, it's foreign. Oh, duh. Level Lord. The Level Lord. Mm -hmm. Newest member of the Amigos Game Selection Beautiful. Committee. Beautiful. Level Lord. Lord. Level Lord. John Marshall. We know him. Our friend from right down the street. Yeah, and the Mary Cater. That's right. Yeah. That, man, he needs a shirt with that on it. That's right. Get on that. Matthew Perron, our Matthew friend Perron. from the Great White North. He's a hoser. How's it going, eh? Ricky DeRocher. The DeRocher. From up there in Mass. From Revere. Actually, I don't think he's from Revere. Um, Creepy Dead Boy, uh, a.k.a. Michael Ryan. Another dead person. Here with us in the chat. Uh, famous software developer. Uh, creator of the Lulu and the Luna and the Moonlight. Something like that. Remember that? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I mean, the kids still play it. Yeah. Um, we got uh, Figgy CTZ. The Fig. The Fig. This guy's prolific. Creator of the... Uh, creator of the Portable Amiga. Ricky DeRocher actually from New Hampshire. Boy, that is death if you tell somebody from New Hampshire they're from Massachusetts. They hate that. They're the same area. No, New Hampshire people will not appreciate that at Ooh, all. Ooh, what are they gonna do? You haven't been up there. You New haven't Hampshire lived- New Hampshire people, are they gonna come get me? You haven't lived in Massachusetts. You don't know the wrath. I'm not worried about people. I mean, listen, if someone said I was from Massachusetts and I wasn't, I would be pissed. There you go. You get a valid point there, dude. We got the slow Norris. Hey, slow Norris. Yeah. Simpson's an give awesome give her give her many too. fine yeah. gifts. Yeah, great banner. Thank you, slow. Stefan Sorgard Mortensen. Uh, we got Edvin Helland. Another uh, prolific poster. Just, guy. Yeah, just received his Secret Santa gift today in the mail. He just got his. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank God. Hey, the mail sucks. Posted a uh, posted video of it in Discord unboxing. Where is Edvin? Edvin's in Norway. So that. It takes a while to get up there. Yeah, yeah. It routed around the North Pole. Blendo 75. The Blend Man. Um, Blendo 75 from West Virginia, up there in the Northern Panhandle. Right up there. It's a whole different country up there. Yeah. Better one. Christopher Hassel. Hasifa. Oh, he'll have Also, me. giver of many fine gifts. Fine Including fellow. the SNES Mini that's gotten a ton of play over the yeah, Christmas holidays. Yeah, killing this thing. Um, 
We got uh, Ravi Abbott, world traveler, DJ, kung fu superhero. He does <laughs> Really? <laughs> I never knew that about A lot Ravi. of things about Ravi you don't know. Also, he has a little show. Yeah, he's got a little show. They're kind of small potatoes compared oh, to Amiga. Oh, yeah, yeah. Called the Retro Hour. Um, Chris Folds. Just fun to say. Just fun to Have say. Said. Uh, we got Dreamcatcher, the gangster from Manchester. He's a he's a non-stop writing machine, and his new foray into video has been gold this year. Who is that rapper that's really annoying that you like? All of them? No. The Prodigy. I hate those guys. That You told me you love them. No. That's like saying I'm from Massachusetts right there. Anyway. Keep going. That's what I figure Dreamcatcher is like. Yeah. He's, he's like the Mohawk and the stuff. The gangster from Manchester. Um... So uh, I always lose my place. Laurent Giroux is Laurent next. Giroux, I love Software that developer keeps us on the straight and narrow. That's right. He's got tons of anecdotes from working I call in the him industry. The conscious yeah. of the amigos. Absolutely. And we need one. We Several need one. <laughs> Graham Vebke. The Veb. Giver of many fine gifts, including the uh, liquor you see before you. A fine fellow and a fine family. Nice guy. Absolutely. Graham's around, one of the good hunky, ones. Hunky dory dude. Brent Dowdy. No, he's not any good at all. <laughs> what? Scratch him off. How about Lane Denson? Lane Denson, a, p- a perfect gentleman. I've always a thought fine Lane, man. Lane he has a cool old, name. Old ladies across the street. Yeah. I've yeah. heard. Um, Adam Battersby. The batter. Yep. Yep. O'Brien's Retro and Vintage. They were there day one ish. One of the original. There. One of the original Patreons. Man, I was, you're not going to get anywhere near that store in your travels. Oh, over there, I yeah. would love to, though. Can you do a, how far is it to get over to O'Brien's from Ireland? It's probably not too close. It's like between can't Atlanta a, and West Virginia. Can't you get on a train or something? They got those. It's over right there. over. Right over there. Go over and say hi, O'Brien, for me. I wish I could. Maybe he's I got, will. He's got cool crap in his store, too. Check out O'Brien's. Uh, there's Gary Hucker. The Huck. The Huck. We love the Huck, don't we? His hardware videos, man. They keep us running, don't they? They do. We they love do. you, Huck. C. Brian Jones, departed guitarist for the Rolling Stones. Man. Still among us today with the initial C. That's right. Is it S-E-A? I wish. I, I think I'd go there. I'd, I'd just change it legally. Yeah. Paul Harrington with us in the chat now. We love Paul. Uh, we'll see him at Amiga Ireland. Uh, He's will coming. we? Well, Have a good time over there. You'll be with me in spirit. I'll oh, carry yeah. a picture of you in my wallet. No, you'll. What will be with you is spirits. That's true. Get that wrong. That's true. <laughs> uh, we got Duncan Styles. The Dunk. Yep. The dunk Master. With us also in chat, creator of the Neon category intros. He's quite a genius. This he one. is. He is. He's the man. Also, his name is my favorite donuts. Really? Yeah. yeah. You like Dunkin' Donuts? I like Mr. Donuts cream? better. Mr. Donut. They're out of business. Man, that's like from the '60s. Uh, Mr. Donut? Just continue. When was the last time you... Mr. Donut, they haven't been around since I was born. Well, listen, would you just shut? Um, Don't don't bad my age. Let's see. Alan Kebab. He's got kebab in his name, one of my favorite foods. Alan Kebab. I'll get you a kebab. Did we Um, cover Alan Kebab already? We talked about him when... um, What was it? He gets double billing. He does get double billing. I don't know how... He's that important to us. Yeah. Um, Anthony Jarvis. The Jar Man. Yeah. If you will. Tapes from the Crypt. Hey, another fine fellow. Yeah, from down in Texas. Sent us some great state of Texas. Here. And a fellow, well, I, I, well, I used to be a videotape collector, but now I'm just a sellout. He just returned from the Holy Land. Really? Yeah. He was in West Virginia? Yeah, it's hard to believe, right? Man, I'm, good thing he returned, pal. It's getting <laughs> bad here. Keep it going. <laughs> Sleep it again. Um, we got uh, Josh Nan. The Nan. My favorite kind of Indian bread. Josh? Mm-hmm. That's Adam? A, really? Nan. Oh, I was a joke. Was it? I don't know. Adam Bradley? The Brad Man? Mm-hmm. Jonas Rulo, manufacturer of all of our magnets. We only get them from one supplier. As I recall, he's in the uh, the great state of Hawaii. That's right. Do he's you want to come along with me? He's living the life over there. That's right. He's living the great life in Hawaii. Nobody's in Hawaii that's not living a great life. We love you, Jonas. Thank you very much for all you've done. THT. THT, which we've, we've speculated to this day what that stands for. <laughs> Eric Nelson. Eric Nelson, a fine fellow. Yes. A fine fellow with his own fine show. Fellow podcaster, Eric yeah. Nelson. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm waiting in the wings. I've got his the latest track that dropped. BBSing probably right now. Possibly. Michael, send me your address. I'll send you a magnet. 
Beautiful. Uh, let's see, Kim Tommy Humberstein. Humberstein. One of my favorite all-time names. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Daniel Bingston. The Bing, mm -hmm. we love Daniel. Brutal Barracuda. A video producer extraordinaire. Yeah. He's hot at it, making crazy uh, uh, shooting game videos nonstop. I'm on his channel occasionally, and it, it cranks those things out daily. Awesome. Darren Cole. The Cole, old King Cole. He's a merry old soul. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. I think we've done that already. Well, you can you can do it again. Jason Warns. Warns. Yeah. What can you say? He's awesome. He's the guy that keeps everything Amiga.com running. He's, I mean, literally, he saved our butts. He coded it from the ground up, yeah. right next to the metal. Unbelievable. He's the man. It's unbelievable. Thank you, sir. Pixels at Dawn. Pix. He's yep. a fine fellow. Chairman of the Amigos Game Selection Committee. Just managed to drop in. It's in the a, chat. It's a it's a thankless task, isn't it? Yeah. Because every day we drop in and just scream at these guys. And More finally, sports. and finally, our very own Gimli the Dwarf. The Gim. Kjolbjorn. Barman. Enough said. Yeah. That's all you got to say when you got a name like that. That's all you got to say. Aaron, next week, we're back at it. Right back at it. No 2019. Break. No vacation boat. 2019. We're going to play a game near and dear to my heart because of my favorite hobby. Second oh, Samurai. Ooh. Second right. Samurai. You're, wait a minute. There's a far cry between what you do and being a samurai. It's almost the same thing. You're, I you're am, afraid of blood, I am, But I do live by the code of Bushido. You do? <laughs> Since when? Well... So I, you're saying every time you've drawn your sword, it's tasted of human blood? I might start the code of Bushido tomorrow. I'm going to leave here before you do that. <laughs> Guys, Happy New Year. Thanks for being with us. Let's on have one final one. Hey, Boat, this one's to you for putting up with me for another year and all the folks that keep putting up with both of us. Salud. <sighs> nice job. Take it to the house, Boat. Guys, thanks for being with us. Have a great 2019. We'll see you next week. Until then... Adios. Adios.